Welcome to another episode of the Grappling With Life podcast. Today, I'm joined by Jack Cronin of 33 Jiu-Jitsu, North London man, through and through. Yeah. And today he came in dressed like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Brother, he pulled off that jacket. Stab, stab vest. <laughs> the stab vest. Because he knew he was coming to Hackney. Because there's a there's a rivalry between North London and, and, and Hackney as well. I think to more Tottenham than, uh, than Hornsey. But... Thank you very much for coming, Jack. Honestly, it's it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, and I appreciate. Um, so I, I thought I thought we get cracking with a little game, yeah. Mm. I've, I've been trying something new, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say up a couple of words, and you have to choose between them. Mm. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So the first one is pulling guard or takedown. Nah, you tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Let me. <laughs> Pulling guard is fine in a jiu-jitsu competition if you do something with it. Right. Now, so now we're going to go deep straight. Away. <laughs> he's got, yeah. he's looked up. You know, when he looked up to the right, I was like, oh my God. So but you just got to pick one, Jack, and then we can go into it. Pulling guard. Pulling guard, yeah? Okay. But you know I love takedowns. I know you do. But I said it for a reason. I know you do, because you, you're jiu-jitsu three and three, Rolf. What okay, it? so so just give us a little bit of an idea why you pick pulling guard. So that I could talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what it what it is, yeah, is a lot of guys are coming from a gi background. Right. Now, when they do no gi, they're completely lost without the grips. So they end up pulling guard and just being completely lost and on a, and on a defensive. If you're doing uh, a lot of no gi, a huge element to pulling guard will be wrestling up. Right. It will be wrestling up. You're setting up underhooks. Uh, you're setting up a gable grip, predominantly an overhook or a double unders grip. And then there's only three things that you can do from any guard in jiu-jitsu. You pick any guard, there's only three things that you can do. A sweep, a submission, and a back take. Okay. That's it. So it makes sense uh, to lock off one grip and have all three options available to you. So if I lock off a gable grip, lock it off, the pressure's on, I can threaten a sweep, the submission, and a back take all at once. Just... Sweep submission back A, B, C, C, B, A, B, C, A. So the guy can't defend three things at once. So that then makes the makes the guard very dangerous because if they come towards you, you have your gable, your overhook, your your double unders, for example, sweep, submit, take the back. You also have ashy and cross ashy on the legs. So you have upper body control, lower body control, threatening the sweep submission and the back take. But also at any time you can wrestle up. Without those two elements, no gi, pulling guard's stupid. Now, I'm not right. talking about from an MMA perspective. I'm definitely talking about it from a strictly... Grappling perspective. Grappling perspective. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? But I love takedowns. Yeah. But I just wanted to... I wanted Good. To no, that. you know, I'm going to ask you a follow-up yeah. question on that one, yeah? So, would you differentiate between pulling guard from standing hmm. and pulling guard from a seated position? Is it about... So, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Say, say, say. So, for example, uh, we're on our knees. Mm. So, we're, we're kind of somehow we get on our knees. Yeah. And we pull guard from that position. Well, I mean, the whole. Uh, Maybe the whole, it might be a stupid question, but. No, it's not a stupid question. But the whole like knee wrestling uh, thing, it, it never really comes into it in, in, in practice. There's always going to be someone. Uh, on top passing, there's always going to be someone doing that. So when you've got two guys knee wrestling, one of them just has to jump up to their feet yeah. and just run the other yeah, one down. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if, you know, if I've seen it before though. Yeah, if you're starting your So they, you know the butt wrestling. scooting, they yeah. the hold, the hold and then they kind of jump into a guard or, yeah. or even like, for example, someone's sitting and the other person is standing. Yeah. That might be just a guard pass. So I guess if we go to mount from there, right? So, um, but why would you say, okay, this is another question. Why would you say guard pulling has this kind of, would you say negative, not negative, <laughs> more of a, there's like a, there's like a tribe in it. There's the takedown tribe and then yeah. there's the guard pulling tribe. I think what it comes down to is that the guys that get annoyed with guard pulling yeah. get frustrated with the guard puller because then they might find it difficult to pass their guard. Whereas they know when they hit a takedown, they end up in a nice half guard or a nice side control. Might even end up in their guard anyway. And they feel frustrated that, you know, you, you haven't you haven't wrestled me. You haven't grappled me. You've sat down, you've taken away my strongest element. But there's logic to that, mm. right? If you know someone, if I, if I come up against someone and I know that they're a better wrestler than me, 
what am I going to do? Get thrown on my head. Yeah. If I pull guard, I've already, yeah. I've already got in there now. They're like, oh, he's taken away that. Then if I choose to wrestle up from guard, yeah, like maybe they get, maybe they get deep in a knee cup. I'm able to snag an underhook, create a scrambler and then come yeah. on top. I've used my wrestling from a guard underneath position to get, to then get on top. Does that, got, does, does that make sense? Okay. But if you know that you, you're t you can confidently take someone down, you would just straight away, boom, boom, bam. So what would you say? Would you say that someone who pulls guard mm -hmm. has a certain type of game? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Like the guy who pulls guard have got a specific type of, type of game and the guy who does takedowns has got a specific type of game. Well, well, if we put it like this, I didn't have a takedown game. Yeah. Okay, because predominantly I was gi through and through up till brown belt. Right. I had no takedown game up until brown belt. It was pull guard. Sweep, submit, take it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then at brown belt, doing a gi, I added in um, a gi variation of a sweep single, catch the leg and I just yeah. run them down from one side and the mat to the other. I loved it. But then I made the transition over to no gi, no gi. and I had to basically start again because gi and no gi are completely, different, completely sports, different, man. Yeah. Like, especially now, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And there are some guys out there today that are, that are doing both. Um, but yeah, my opinion is that they they're so they're so so different, and you really you really should pick one unless you're in like one of the best academies in the world, surrounded by people that are highly experienced in both. Now, if you're out there by yourself and you've got to choose to dedicate your time to one or the other, pick one. And for me, Noki resonated through and through and through. It's just when I was coming up with the belts, it wasn't it wasn't very common. It was like you do gi gi is a real jujitsu. And yeah, no gi is just now nah, just take your take your take gi top off and do it off, on yeah. Fridays. Mm. But it was so rudimentary and basic compared to the level of no gi grappling that you see in these days. Mm. You know, that's interesting because yeah. I think um, I wish Emir was here, bro, because we've been having this conversation in the past, I'd say, ten years, bro. So, um, and when we first started, we did, we did, obviously we didn't have jujitsu at Legion. It was just mm -hmm. a pure wrestling club. And I have know Amir was doing basically catch wrestling mm -hmm. before Legion. It was almost like, um, you know how, you know, before people just figure things out, right? Mm -hmm. um, through osmosis, through training with other people. Yeah. yeah. So, and then we got to a point where it was like, do we, do we just do submission wrestling? Mm -hmm. You know, um, when we're looking at kind of bringing jiu-jitsu in, because at the time there weren't many people wanting to come and teach at Legion because they've already got prior commitments. Other people mm -hmm. had, uh, you're looking at 10 years ago, mm -hmm. the, la the landscape was completely different. Completely different. And there was less black belts around mm -hmm. and it, they were, they were kind of like, you know, stuck. Um, and then the, 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 we had some purple belts come and teach. Uh, um, do you know, um, you, you used to train at Mill Hill, did you? I did. Yeah, so do you yeah. know Ed? Yes, Ed. Ed taught. Ed taught uh, I didn't, at Legion I didn't know for that. a little bit. He, he, uh, if he ever watches this, bro, I don't know if you remember, Ed, um, where as a white boy, he cracked me up. He mounted me and then <laughs> he sunk his, uh, you know when you do the, the, the vines? Mm -hmm. Ed's a big boy. Mm -hmm. Bro, this was my like, third jiu-jitsu lesson, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this, man? Mm -hmm. I felt my soul come out of my body, man. 100%. Um, and then and then, and then, then we had Viking come in and, and then Jude kind of like, we kind of, with Jude now, obviously, we've been glorious mm -hmm. and we decided, but we're still having that conversation. Should we, because, you know, with the wrestling background, geek sometimes is a hindrance, but we're kind of like flip-flopping a little bit. Um, but obviously we love geek. Geek mm -hmm. is interesting. So many more things you can do with a gi and there's a lot more there's things. A way more things you can do but no gi is not my favorite man because yeah it's just i don't know what it is about no gi it's, it's what do you reckon real. is the draw to no gi and why do you think people love watching no gi more than max landersman he yeah. said this to me and this is what was it that one yes yeah, that max one, yeah. landersman said this to me gi is the art of controlling a jacket yeah and thereby controlling the person in the jacket. Yeah. No gi is the art of controlling the human body. Mm. There's nothing, you know, the only handles you have no gi is what's 
you know, the muscles, the underhooks, the, and the, the overhooks. Yeah. That's 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 basically it. Yeah, you're actually and, in your cross yeah. actually, but the what is on the nothing added. It's just the body. You know, it's, yeah. it's that is the natural grappling. You know, so much exists. Uh, gi. I'm not hating on gi. It's just not my thing. Yeah, yeah. But so much exists in gi that when you take that off, you're you're going to be lost. So, do you think that you're going to see more and more? kind of no gi only academies because i know your, I think so. your academy is strictly no gi right strictly yeah but let's t- tell me a bit mm. about you kind of already explained it but tell me look i didn't even start though stop watch give me a second because <laughs> i know this is uh, going to be one of those joe rogan ones blood so but good. um which i love which is because so i've got so many questions yeah bro. um yeah man so you've already explained a little bit about why you chose no, no, you didn't really you kind of touched it. So why, why did you actually thought, you know what? Because it's a bold move, bro. Mm-hmm. You start an academy um, and you're like, no, no, no gi mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. So what made you so come to that? Because was it easy to come to that? Cause easy. It, right. When I was a brown belt, I damaged my fingers. So all three of them are pretty mashed up. So I lost a lot of the gripping ability in my right hand. Let me see your fingers, bro. So you got that one there. And that one there, they just... But you got those ET fingers as well, bro. It, bro. The... Like they don't, it doesn't close properly. Like when I make a fist, there's a there's a big gap between the finger. Right. So if you imagine the, the, the structural integrity, when I go to get it, when I go to get a geek grip, yeah. it's, it's, there's a big gap there. So the right. grip isn't as fortified. So there's a lot of gripping power was lost. So what happened? Like you got your, just use of Maybe use. overtraining and also being stubborn. I had a sleeve grip one day. The guy snatched it away. I was like, oh, I'm not letting go of that. Right. And the finger just went with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get that no do you? So no more Hadoukens for you, bro. No more, bro. <laughs> so. Did you do judo at all? I didn't, you know. And and if you are doing gi, you should be doing judo as yeah. well. Yeah. You know. All right. Yeah, hybrid, hybrid wrestling, you could work in, but they're... You should, you should be at least be doing, if I could go back and I was doing gi, I'd, I would stick in some judo there as well. I think even myself, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm rolling, I try not to use, if, in gi, it's not, it's not I'm not doing it on purpose, but I don't like grab, grabbing and having to keep that grip for a long time. It's just, bro, I don't like what it does to my fingers, bro, the next day, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do try and, I, I'm kind of using no gi in, in gi anyway. Um, most of the time I'm breaking grips then actually establishing them or it changes everything and your wrists go as well bro like, like no, no gi someone's got a, a collar tie you know you just slip, yeah, slip yeah. over but gi is literally you're, you're stuck you know it's, yeah. it's, it's different it's different man and and going back to why why I decided to, yes to, yes to go down that route was when I damaged the fingers I had to then do no gi because right. I couldn't grip. So how long ago was this? And this was this was probably about five years ago. Okay. So I was a brown belt. So then I started doing I started doing more no gi, a little bit of gi still. I only really stopped doing gi totally just as the lockdown came in. So what was that? Right. Two yeah, years two ago years now, ago, something yeah, like that. Two years ago. But what I, what I realized is that I was in a training room. And now bearing in mind, I was a brown belt, yeah? And I'm going up against blue belts who are just doing a lot of wrestling and no gi. Yeah. And I can't get anything on these guys. This all is my, in no gi. This is no gi. Right. All my gi game. Yeah. But I was confident if we were in a gi, I'd be doing, but we're not wearing a gi, we're doing no gi and everything's gone and I'm feeling lost and all the ranges are different, all the setups are different, all the... Mm. So what I then had to do is I had to go go back and reteach myself. I was like, right, I, fairly confident in the gi, I know what I'm doing, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reverse engineer all of this. Anything that doesn't cross over is getting binned for the nogi, anything that crosses over I can use. So what I really had to do is I had to just basically chuck everything away and start again and start figuring things out and figuring out what are the patterns that happen consistently during the training, during the competition. Because there's only so many, so many ways that the human body can move. Mm. So my thing was, if I can learn those patterns, then these are, these are the moves and these are the patterns that I'm... So you sat do, down and sat down with a piece of months, paper, piece of paper. Cause I saw your notebook like one day. I remember when you came into the gym, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw a notebook with you. And you I was did, like, you this, 
You, you were sitting there writing something. Yeah, you did. And I was a bit too shy to come and ask you. What it was is that because <laughs> Coach Amir had shown the techniques the yeah. week before because I was only, I could only come every week or two. Weeks. I remember, I'd, yeah. I'd go home and I'd, I'd read them, read the names of them, read the order of them, put the notebook down, try and visualize them, come back to it. Yeah. So I just needed a refresher before I got on the mat because I know that we were doing the same oh, techniques okay. that day. Right, 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 right. right. You know, hadn't done it for a few days. So would you, would you say, so... Um, how do you approach uh first of all, what was it like to say to yourself i'm gonna have to start again uh, i i didn't hate it for one second i was like this right. is the truth and this is the way that i have to go if this is the truth and my jiu-jitsu isn't working in an yeah. od setting then i have to deal with it mm. there's no other there's no other way you know what did your your coaches like previous coaches or do you speak to them? Do, what, have they, what, what do they think about all this? Well, uh, I left Mill Hill just before I got my brown belt. Mm. And then since then, uh, I'd known Alan Pozo for years, probably since I was a blue belt. Right. And uh, he'd always been saying to me, yeah, come come to ZR team. I I'm affiliated with now. Right, okay. Come to ZR team. So what GB... When, when, when was GB? I was working. I was working there. Oh, so you, you wasn't... Because I, I knew the guys there, but I was never, I was never GB. Oh, I it see. It was literally like, I'm teaching the kids and I end up teaching some adults classes as well. Right, right, right. Um, right, right. But yeah, I'm, I'm technically, I'm technically ZR team. And I've known Alan, he's an Alan Pozo, he's a great guy. I've uh, known, him, known him for years. And uh, he was, he was great to me. He was like, you know, just do your thing. I'm not going to ask anything of you. And uh, I've known you. I've known you for years. Seen you compete, and I'll sign off all that all that paperwork for you. He's never asked me for anything, mm. you know. And that's why I've got a lot of time and respect for him. Well, never that's... asked me for anything. Not one thing. So ZR team are they uh, a Brazilian based team that came over to the UK? Was it because uh, I, I don't know much about them to be honest with you. So Alan, uh, Alan would be the background head on of the ZR team in the UK. Right. ZR stands for Z, uh, Z uh, Radiola. Right. Who. Um, it was originally a Gracie Baja guy in Brazil. Right. I think he was Alan's first. Was he Alan? I think he was he Alan's first coach. I think so. I think so. Um, Alan Alan Pozo Pozo is he Brazilian? He he is, but he's like he's a, he lived in America and UK for years. So he's oh, okay. He's he's like Americanized, British eyes. I got you. You <laughs> know, like yeah. So okay, yeah, so that's, that's, the, that's the dotting. That's and your kind of lineage, kind of at the moment. Yeah. And they do gear and no gear. They do need gear and no gear. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. And how long have they been in the UK for a while or is it so that, something recent? That, don't quote me, but maybe like four or five years that's been going. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And they're they're a massive team, especially on the gi circuit. Mm. They are um because there's ZR teams in Brazil, America, and and, and Britain, all, all over the place, really. Right. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they're they're a big team, massive Wicked. growing. <laughs> So yeah, what do they say? So apart from so, what about your 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 peers? What, what do they feel about it? Do you feel like there's a change, a, a change now with the new wave of uh, of uh, jujitsu players in the UK, especially because I think we're a bit. I was not. I'm not going to say behind, but so jujitsu came quite later to the UK, and the scene mm-hmm. is is really like exploding at the moment. Mm-hmm. Would you say that? People are more preferring gi now in the UK than uh, sorry, not gi, no gi now in the UK. No gi is going to pull an audience. Right. Gi is super boring unless you understand. Super technical, yeah, yeah. super great sport. But unless you understand what's going on, you're going to be you're going to be bored out of your skull. There's a few like exciting guys. I yeah. got to admit, I've, yeah. But again, I've been watching jiu-jitsu for a long time. Mm-hmm. So someone like I don't know. Like my son watching it, he might. But like nogi, them. if you get like a nogi submission only rule mm. set where the guys are going after it, you know it's it's slippery, it's fast, it's it, it, it's it's higher paced than gi generally. Yeah, it is. I yeah. think that is what is gonna put bums on seats and get people watching. Mm. You know, um, and you can again you combine that with the with the wrestling. Um, yeah, you yeah. know, because there's a lot more scrambles nogi. So again, wrestling is going to be 
more of a more much more of a factor not just wrestling standing but wrestling up from god yes. you know so define wrestler because yeah. you, you mentioned wrestling this twice up. now right so, so define wrestling up for us let's say uh i am seated or on my back right guys pressuring me foot on the chest this is just an example foot on the chest kicking back he's coming back towards me boom come up oh, on a double carpal okay. single and run him down or you're in half guard, kick up for the underhook, get to the dogfight position, and then run them down. That that kind of, that kind instead of instead of you know, instead of t- uh, a traditional sweep like boom 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 you right. know, straight over straight over the top. So you know. attaining a, a top position mm. with wrestling basically with wrestling. Right. You're not wrestling from the feet. You're wrestling under un- yes. Un- you're so wizards, uh, underhooks, underhooks uh, overs, uh, coming overhooks. up, creating yeah. scramble. And then, and then, interesting. So effective, no gi. It's so mm. effective, no gi. And that really, um, that that adds another dimension to to guard. You're not just trying to sweep them off your back. You're always threatening to come up. So they have to put effort to keep you down. But by them putting effort to keep you down, they're coming into your guard. So give me. An, so uh, uh, I'll give you a scenario. So mm. I'm in close. Uh, I've got you in close guard, which mm. probably never happened. But anyway, I just imagine this. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go, man. Jiu-jitsu. Let's go. Let me dream for a little bit, bro. Go, man. <laughs> so I got your clothes guard, yeah? yeah? Yeah. So in that position, mm-hmm. just define for me, just as a student mm-hmm. of the game, yeah? How would you wrestle up from that close guard position? Or you don't do it from close. It's more half close guard. guard hard. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's half guard or... Half guard or butterfly guard. Right. Butterfly's guard is the main open guard, no, no gi jiu-jitsu. Right. Or is it all good disengaged? So open guard with an underhook. Then. So yeah, so so butterfly guard, you could have an underhook a gable locked off. Right. You could have an overhook locked off. You could yeah. have you could have double unders. They're, right. they're your main grips from a seated butterfly guard. Right. Um if the guy is standing in your butterfly guard, then it'd be uh, a leg entanglement because that'd be your first point of contact because yeah. upper body's too far away. So it'd be ashy or a, or, a, or a cross ashy. Right. Um but the the wrestling up generally generally comes from you're trying to pull him into the upper body uh hold and he and he's backing away and doesn't so want to explain that to me. so i'm trying to i'm trying to pull the guy into the gable or overhook from my butterfly guard right but yeah. he's but he's like backing off and running around right doesn't want to engage okay and then you, you come up and you blast them i see what you mean so you're so either going to get that he's giving you that space to kind of uh, so you either get that and you run him down you put him down or to defend that, they have to bring their weight back towards you. Right. Then they come back into your gable and your overall right. system. As soon as you've got that locked off, sweep, submit, take it back, sweep, submit, take it back. You just keep looping that round. You'll have that, those options, for as long as you have the control position, i.e. gable, overhook, double unders. They're the main upper body controls, uh, positions and systems for butterfly guard. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm guessing you've got like a... Um, so. Talk to me a bit about 33 Jiu-Jitsu, man. Okay. So, firstly, where did you come up with the name as well? Because that's uh, interesting. Yeah, so so the civilian answer is 33 is my favourite number. Right. Why? But the real, but then the real answer okay. is... Uh, it's going to sound so... Go on, just do it, bro. Switch off now. No, 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 just do it, bro. Throughout my life, but if you switch off, you're not, you're not, you're not part of the gang, bro. Exactly. Throughout my life, yeah, I was consistently. I saw it when I walked in here on the clock. Yeah, it said whatever the time or something thirty three. Right. I was like, yeah, cool. Meant to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. okay. I saw that. No one saw that. Yeah. Um, and I saw it before I left the house as well. It's just I see it all the time. Right. When I'm in alignment. Right. If I'm not in alignment. I won't see it. I knew it was going to be something like this. It'll hide from me. Right. Yeah? Okay. When you say alignment, what do you mean? Doing the right thing, right. being where I'm supposed to be. Just being being where I'm supposed to be in life at that, right. at that specific moment, yeah. you know? Um, and then when I see that, it's a, it's a verification. So it has to be 33 or is it three? It's, generally, it's, it's, it's 33. It's 33. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, oh, like I'll be having a great day. I'll look to the side and it'll be like 4.33. I'm like, yeah. You know? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And that's it. But so it's, that's you, know, you know, I'll tell you something jiu-jitsu. very interesting, yeah, which is uh, Islamically, the number three, mm. actually odd numbers, mm-hmm. is something like, for example, we, uh, give me an example. Number three. We have- uh, Supplication, bro. Eating something. Huh? Eating something in three or- yeah. Drinking in threes. Drink like when okay. you drink water, we drink it in threes. Oh wow. It's a sunnah, which means okay. it's a prophetic tradition. 
Yeah. Seven as well has got a big, um, there are seven heavens. Seven seas? I'm pretty sure there's seven seas, bro. I'm pretty sure that's a song. I don't know. Is it? Seven seas is a song? No, the, the, it's, it's part of a lyric of a song, I think. Bro. Is it? I don't know what you've got. Nursery rhymes you're listening to, bro. <laughs> The wheels on the bus, bro. But yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. okay, I, I get, I get, I get, I get, I get where you're coming from, yeah. bro. Okay, so, so your thing, so when you say alignment, so I'm guessing your jujitsu kind of like, I get your system. I don't want to use the air quotes. No, your system, um, is all about alignment. You're saying, like, it's got. Is I mean, that I, is that why you find it really easy just to kind of ditch the gear because it just didn't feel right. You kind of it like didn't, it didn't. It didn't feel right, and I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do something where I felt I couldn't do it to the best of my ability anymore. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I had couldn't grip my right hand properly. So it was like oh, you know it's, it's severely limiting me. So let me go over to nogi. And since I've been doing nogi, there's no. I don't. I used to go through so many rolls of tape because I'd yeah. be taping my hands and wrists up daily. I haven't had anything going wrong with my fingers. I mean, so many then. things have happened from people like yourself who've had, if I can call it, not a handicap, but some sort of, uh, to use the word handicap in a, like they can't do something. And something, something's it's come up, handicap. come out. It's a handicap, it's right? A handicap. You're like, you can't, you, you know what you want to do. Yeah. But it's like, well, I can't reach up there because if, if my hand even touches that yeah. collar and it gets stripped, it's just like... So, ah. so you've had to be creative you know? to kind of solve that problem. So like, for example, Helio Gracie. Again, he was very small. He was very, you know, like he had to come up with something that, you know, obviously there's going to be yeah. lots of guys waving their fingers at the screen. But this whole Helio Gracie thing. And, uh, but Man, it's, it's a consensus so much, that he created. So much respect for there them. you go. But like, none of us would be doing this. If exactly, it, bro. Them. And you talk about like, oh yeah, and the lineages and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, doing yeah. it and stuff like that. But whatever, man, jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu. Whatever. Like you know, uh, be, they branded it, they packaged it, you know? they exported it, and now we're doing it, right? So whoever was doing it at a time when he was doing it, fair enough. But he was first, right, to get it out. But he used that, that handicap, which is him being smaller and more frail, and create a, I say created, he adapted an art um, that, you know, that everyone's using now, you know? So, that's it. Um, all right. So, <laughs> what about competing? Mm. So, I know you used to compete quite a bit. I'm, I'm, I've, obviously, I haven't seen you post, but you might be competing without posting. <sighs> How is that even possible, bro? That people are competing without posting no, on no. Instagram, bro? Is that even possible, bro? <laughs> Not these days, now. But, um, Post pandemic, how have you kind of? Because um, I know during the pandemic, I think we spoke. I think on Instagram quite mm-hmm. like once or twice. Yeah, I don't know because I was watching you doing some nut crazy stuff in your house, bro. Mm-hmm. Just like Klaus, you know, you see, uh, Black Viking. Who's that? Nah, nah. Oh, uh, bro, go to his Instagram. Yeah, he's probably got a similar setup. His one's okay. way more nuts than yours, bro. Okay. Yeah, but um, you're doing all these. Uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's, me there, yeah. That's you there, bro. Oh, they can't hide these days, innit? You Look, can't, you can't. Just in a shoulder press in the house, nothing crazy. Bro, do you that. even have sofas, bro? Huh? Uh, no, nah, I don't. <laughs> He's got a bench. I just sit on the floor, bro. Yeah, that's it, man. That's <laughs> Not it. Not lying either. And some shoulder presses there. So, shoulder presses. I'm guessing throughout the, the pandemic, did you? Obviously, you know what? I don't want to beat you up. That's a self snitching, yeah. But. Yeah, you know, people yeah. were training. Yeah, in so I trained all the way through the pandemic. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> I trained all the way through. I had people coming around to my houses and doing one to ones almost every day. Yeah, it's all good. We're all adults. You First, know? another thing is there's, there's a statute of limitations. They can't touch you though, do you? Oh, okay, so it's fine. Well, it's if good, Boris man. Johnson can do it, hey, listen, the hypocrites, man. If Boris Johnson could do it, my guy was training, bro. Yeah, not Staying drinking, healthy. having exactly, bro. Taking thousands of I use of vitamin D and vitamin C every single go. day. Which was to be honest, if most people did what you did and trained at home, and you know, we wouldn't be in this situation. In the first, not not as bad anyway. Oh, oh my god, no. we're gonna get flagged on YouTube, bro. Who cares though? Bun it, salut. <laughs> so, so what was it like? Because obviously you've been training most of your life, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. the pandemic hit, and yeah. it was like. Well, what, how did you kind of navigate through that? So when it first hit, I was like, right, can't go anywhere. What have I got at home? So I had a, I had a, like a, a couple of brooms and a couple of mops. So I snapped the ends off them. And then I had uh, loads of old. So I went Can through you just the, unscrew them, bro? 
Why did you snap them, bro? Can you just unsnap snap them? Oh, I think they were on or whatever. I took them off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. You just had it with a Kimura. <laughs> Practice. I was going mad. Exactly. Insane. Yeah. But did I, you live on your own? No, I live on my girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. wasn't you just being nuts on, uh, in your house. Where the mops gone? I'm yeah. training. Leave me alone. <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. um, so I had I had, I had loads of uh, five litre five litre empty bottles in the recycling. You know, right. water. Five yeah, 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 bottles. yeah. So. In my head, I'm like, yeah, five liters is like five kilos, right? Yeah. So yeah. what I would do then is say, for example, I wanted to do uh, bicep curls. I'd, I'd, I'd tape the the the, the mop uh, handles yeah. together at, at this point. And uh, I've got two rucksacks. So I've put, I can put like, I think I'll put like four or five liter bottles in one, four or five liter bottles in the other. So that's 40 kilos right there. So I wouldn't even be bicep curls. That'd be something else. And then... I was limited to the maximum weight I could get is about, was about around about 60 kilos. Right. Okay. Can't remember what else I was putting in there, but it was around about 60 kilos I could get. Um, so I then was doing very high repetition stuff. It was squats and deadlifts that were the, it was just to kind of get you past all that. Exactly. With the, with the, the, um, the overhead pressing, um, and the, the, the benching and the, um, that bicep curls that, that was fine it was just the squats and deadlifts were really awkward with that yeah, but I yeah. still still made I still made that work and then what I did is I thought right let me just let me just get some proper equipment at home gym so yeah. um thousand pounds oh so you bought all of that, I like, all oh, of that. Oh, oh okay so after yeah. so this wasn't in your yard nah, beforehand there was nothing I was training at the gym I was, I was at uh, so your girl must love you bro man like you just getting rid of all the furniture and sticking all that bro there was, no, there was, there was not much to begin with man. <laughs> it was just loads of empty space man. oh right, fair you enough you know what I mean it's like we're in uh, transition period okay fair somewhere enough else, oh, so okay 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 not get, get anything now oh you know? right yeah, yeah Um, but it just it made sense it was like you know it means I don't have to leave the house because mm. you know you go, want to go to the gym it's going to take half an hour to get there you're going to train you're going to have a shower yeah. I can just wake up bang it out have a shower have something to eat I haven't even left the house and then I can mm. go to work and do, and do whatever I need yeah. to do you know so yes yeah, so, you know a thousand pound you can have everything that you need yeah. you'll be able to squat deadlifts because basically at home now I've got I've got up to about 180 kilos do you live on the ground bar. floor bro yeah okay. yeah yeah okay. exactly All right. yeah um, so that you know that's deadlifting. That's 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 more than enough for me yeah. right now. And you got plates like yeah, uh, yeah. Is it the York ones or I've the got cement? Similar. Okay. They're um they're actually ISO lift, so they're right. they're steel. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it. That room. Don't you scared that room to like, change a little bit? Oh, uh, do you know what? I was squatting one day, and I actually slipped and leant and leant forward, and I've got the uh, you see the 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 prongs there. Yeah, they yeah. Actually yeah. caught me. Actually caught me, but it was like crack. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah but yeah. hey, man, it's gonna it's gonna happen, man. It's gonna happen. It's gonna bro. happen. I just lost my footing, you know. Um, but then I've got up to 120 kits, so 60 each side on the adjustable dumbbells as well. Right, right. right. And I've got a chin up and those dip, are sick. Dip ones, state. Oh, they're right, wicked, yeah, man. Yeah. Like, and you don't need a whole rack of dumbbells. You just yeah. got the adjustables, and you just slide Make more five work, kilo pan- pancake plates on. You got you got you got everything everything that you need. And Jack look is looking like he's done a bird, bro. Look, go back to that Instagram. Go back to Instagram. He's done a 10 year stretch in there, bro. And he's waiting. If someone said to me, he's waiting they, for the first no gear competition, bro. He's got a jail music playing in there. <laughs> you know? Hey, look at that, bro. The door's even closed, bro. <laughs> don't, don't come in, right? I'm telling you. I don't want to hear no You're going to get shanked, bro. I don't want to hear anything. <laughs> yeah, he's got the great bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> and the shoes without shoelaces, bro. What are those That's ones, it, bro? That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that kind of like. Um, well, a lot of people, don't, I mean, Instagram and, and social media really kind of did help people through the pandemic. I know it sounds pathetic, bro, yeah, but when you're not meeting people on a daily basis mm-hmm. and then you're kind of seeing people doing things on Instagram and stuff like that, and, um, it does pull you through. And I did, um, yeah. your one was one of the ones that I would, you know, look at, man, if Jack's like, nice. oh, I've got to do something, bro. Nice, nice. I'd do that for five minutes and I'd be like, you know, that's enough, bro. <laughs> <laughs> leave Jack, leave Jack, leave some for Jack, bro. Do you know what I'm saying, <laughs> bro? That high repetition stuff took a, uh, you know, it was like they were hour and a half workouts. Yeah. Because like the workouts I do now, they're like twenty minutes, half an hour long. It's not a lot because you've got grappling on top of that. It's, yeah, it's yeah. very taxing. But um, actually, uh, the, the kind of style of training I do now 
uh, would be a of the lineage of you know Dorian Yates, Mike yeah, Mensa, yeah. the bodybuilding so guys. The, yeah, that makes so much sense to me, and I've seen great results. I mean, like I'm eight, 85 kilos now, and I keep myself at that weight, but I could go to ninety kilos if I really wanted to. Mm. So, you know? so for the guys that are listening, so, so, so Dorian Yates is a bodybuilder, multiple time Mr. Multiple Olympia, yeah. Mr. Olympia bodybuilder. Now. All those, everyone's like, yeah, but those guys take a lot of gear. They all take the same, they all take the same stuff, yeah. more or less. But also yeah. their training as well. It doesn't but just... They're, but, it, but it's the, their training. They're not all yeah. training in the same way. Mm. His theory was, you're going to do a light set, you're going to do a, a medium set, and then you're going to do an absolute all-out set to failure. And you're going to get the same, if not better, results. So give me an example, bro. Like, what, so kind of, what kind of workouts would they be doing? So... Let's say, for example, Look, is that, that's, the one is, that's it? him. He's massive. Yeah. Let's say, for example, yeah, uh, bench press. Yeah. You do, let's, let's say your bench is 100 kilos for between eight and 12, the max one you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So you warm up at like 60. So your uh, max is what? 12. Sorry. Let's say 100. Let's okay, say it was okay. 100, for example, easy number. Let's say you warm up with like 60, eight to 12 reps. Your next set is, is around about 80 kilos eight to 12. And then you know that last time you've written it down, last time you did this hundred kilos, you got nine reps. So in this workout here, you just got to get between 10 to 12 reps and you've, and you've progressed. Right. Okay. Right? Bang, bang, you're banging out your bang. Maybe you get nine and a half. Yeah. Last yeah. time you couldn't get it off your chest. This time you're halfway. You rack it, you make a note, you've improved. And if you have a, enough rest time between sessions, like I've been making constant improvements since I've been so doing rest the times between the sets net. or between sessions? Between sessions. Right. So, so how, because, talk me through your kind of weightlifting. Is, that, is it Monday, Wednesday, that typical no, so, Monday, Wednesday, so Friday? I, I can't do it over, over seven days because of the grappling sessions added in. I don't yeah. have enough time to recover. So, right. so typically my rotation is 12 to 14 days. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I wasn't doing grappling, it, I'd lower it to So, okay, no, this is, a, this is a good point. Yeah. Talk us for your... Monday to Friday, no Monday to Sunday. What do you do, bro? As in well, Wait, training, so everything. Tra everything, training. So Obviously not say, when you eat and all that stuff. Yeah, bro, so let's say, I'll give you give you an example of, of, of what we've got planned this week. Go on. So Monday, I'm going to go to Elite Jiu-Jitsu, Jed Hugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do, do an open mat there. Tuesday, we'll eat. So what time, what time would you normally go? That's for 12.45. Okay, nice time. So that's, that's not my favorite time to train. Okay. Tuesday would be either London Grapple, you know, Ross Nichols' yeah, place, Ross, yeah. uh, or I might do weight training, depending on how I feel from feel from Monday. And uh, 33 later on, but I don't train now, it's just work. Right. Wednesday would be uh, Planet, uh, 10th Planet. Diesel. Uh, uh, yes, Diesel. Yeah. Uh, Thursday and Friday would be weight, weight training. And then uh, back on Saturday for the, the big one at 10th Planet, where they do a two hour session, uh, big 10 minute rounds is my right. favorite sessions of, of the week. I loved, I love that. So session. how does that work? 10 minute rounds? 10, nine, 10 minute rounds. So it's literally So just, how many rounds do you do? Like uh, I so would, for two hours, just 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I'll do, minutes. I'll do six to eight rounds. Right. You know, um, because it's like a bell curve. You hit a point and there is yeah, diminished, it, yeah. diminished returns. And that's when you start getting injured, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And, and then i modified going back to the weight training. Now, any of the weight sessions I do, I've, I've got six weight sessions I do. I go, but that'll be over 12 to 14 days. days. Right, okay. So I've got arms, yeah. shoulders, chest, back, my favorite, deadlift and squats. You do a whole Separated. session just deadlift and squats? Deadlift. After doing deadlifts and um, and either partials or, or stiff-legged deadlifts, I'm done. I can't do squats on the same day. Um, and then... Each of the, so deadlift and squats will just be squats, for example, squats and front squats, done. Deadlifts is deadlifts and partial or deadlifts and stiff-legged deadlifts, done. All the rest of them are, are about four to five, four to five exercises. And they, and they all are. And how long does it take you to finish one? So one, one, one session. Yeah, one session. Is that yeah. 20 minutes, half an hour? 20 minutes? 20 minutes, half an hour. Because you got to consider, I'm not doing multiple working Real set. So you're just doing which, one one body part as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. One, uh, one, so let's say let's say bench for example, like we did before. I'll do my warm up set, my medium set. I'll do my all out maximum set for between eight to twelve. But then what I've added recently is a second working set where I lower the weight to seventy to eighty percent. 
and I go for 12 to 15 reps just to finally just yeah. fry everything a little bit more. So I'll do my, my chest day, for example, is bench press, dumbbell bench, and then, um, and then push-ups. And what I do for the so push-ups, three exercises. Dude, that's it. I'm done. Right, I'm done after okay. that. I can't, I can't do anything else after that. But what I do for the push-ups, it's slightly different. Um, I mean, you could add weight and do the, and do the same thing, but what I've been doing recently at the end is, um, I'll do push-ups. I'll do um, quite a slow, slow pace um, on the positive and negative. I'll do that for two sets, and the third set I'll just add some momentum in, and I'll just I'll just finish up nice and fast. Because, like I say, it's it's that high intensity training method, but it's adapted because we're doing we're doing grappling as well. We're not yeah. we're not doing bodybuilding. Yeah, we do, yes. we do, we're doing. But if I can get the result in twenty minutes, why would I be in the gym for an hour and a half? Yeah, that's long, bro. That for me, got time for that. And sometimes I feel like there's, because you're training for a sport, right? So exactly. sometimes when you're going, you know, these guys that go to the gym and just do weights, yeah? Which I'm not kind of... It's, it's great do doing thing, something, it? you know? Do your thing, yeah, right? man. Yeah, but like if you're grappling, you need to kind of be aware that, again, I'm not an expert. I'm just looking, talking from my experience. If you get too big or too... Yeah. Uh, it's going to start to have an effect on... Your legs you get know, too thick, you're not locking up a triangle. Yes. You know, because your proportions will be out for your weight division. Right. You get on someone's back, you won't be able to lock off a body triangle. I've had that. I had to literally let my legs kind of waste away a little bit because I, I noticed, oh, I can't really move. Yeah. And, I've and never done a body triangle in my life, bro. I've tried. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just because I'm, here, especially on Zach, bro. You need to grab the guys that are like 70 kilos. Yeah, bro. yeah. Or Inman. Even Inman, I can't do a body triangle on him, bro. <laughs> you. But that's because no you're neither, isn't it? it? Kind of. Say that again? Yeah, the knee had a knee problem, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. like, you know. I, I, I'm really scared of doing like, yeah. especially body triangles. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm going to snap it or something. Do you do I'm squats just... and deadlifts for your knee? Bro, you know what? This will really help you. This is why, this this is yeah. kind of selfish on my part. Oh, my, the reason I'm asking these questions is because yeah. I'm getting a bit, uh, we played football the other day on Saturday. Oh, that's going to mess up your knee, bro. Yeah, bro. You know, the next day he goes to me, I was, it was, uh, he called me today. He goes, well, were you in pain, innit? I wasn't in pain, but my knees were sore. Mm. And um, I've put off, I, I, I do some leg exercises, but my my knee is too, my left knee is too weak. Mm. So I, it's kind of threw off my alignment. So when I do do deadlifts, I find that I'm getting pain in my hip a bit. So I feel like I need someone to watch me do it for the first, you know, few, um, you know, like sessions or whatever, just to get my, and we don't have mirrors in the gym. That's another thing. Mm. And if you're not looking at a mirror and making mm. sure that you're correct, it's very hard to do it in your head, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like deadlifts, are definitely. I'm scared of deadlifts, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I might injure myself if I'm not doing it start, properly. Start slow and start at a moderate What would you weight. recommend? What would you recommend? Like, okay, talk me through your deadlift, uh, how do you say it, positioning? What, what's the kind of... Well, the, the deadlift the deadlift positioning, I don't mean, when you first start in it, it does take... And, and I'm not like lifting super, super, yeah. super, super uh, heavy, heavy weight. So it's a respectable amount of, of, yeah. of weight for my, for my body type. Your, you know? your, is it your body weight? How, how do you kind of... Um, figure out what you should be or you like can go on, there's something you can go on strength level or um lift calculator right you type in your um your body weight yeah the weight you're lifting the number of reps on the lift yeah and uh, it will tell you are you beginner intermediate advanced oh, or okay. or elite top tip there bro what's it called strength a strength level google that bro or is that the this one? is the one no, no, no. Well, the other one is lift calculator. Yeah, that's the one he's on, I think. Strength level lift cal. One. one is better than the other. The, uh, this one is th the best one, I think. And then you go to, it will, it will say like squat, deadlift. You click on the, the, the exercise. Hey, 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 you chief. Uh, <laughs> Must put my key. But I'm 97, bro. Watch your mouth. And then, and then you, you did whatever the lift was, it will give you a drop down menu. Okay, so tell you. Yeah, based so on your you, body weight. Yeah, yeah. So say you you could have put in bench or, or it will have a drop down menu on okay. the lift bit. And then it will tell you where you're sitting, um, where, where you're sitting basically. What does NOV mean? Novice. Novice. Okay, so beginner, right, right. novice, intermediate, advanced, elite. Right, so I should be lifting 157 kilos. See, but this is fine. Not elite, my, my squat is like intermediate, but right. my deadlift is like advanced. I hate squats. I never got on well with them. 
I really, I like, my hip always gets sore. tight and sore. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'm actually going to, in the next couple of weeks, I'm actually going to take them out and replace it for a leg press instead. So I can. How would you do that at home? Oh, and I have to go to the gym. Oh, for right, right, right. I'm right. going to go and buy a leg press and bring it home. <laughs> That's man. long, bro. That's too much, man. You know, I can pay seven quid and go to the gym and yeah, just exactly. get it done, you know. Yeah, just get it sorted. <laughs> okay, that's quite interesting. Yeah. So, um, you've got, so you're training every day, bro. I have one or two rest days a week. A week so, um, yeah. so, I've never heard any, personally anyway, that do a 14 day or 12 day. Yeah. Why did you, why did you choose that? Why because, uh, literally, trial and error. Right. If I if I say again, going back to ch- bench chest day, I'm just using it as an example. Yeah. It could be any of the workouts. If I did it on a Monday, I tried to do it the next Monday. I've written down everything I lifted that last Monday. I will not hit the numbers. I will not get above those numbers, and I and I might not even hit those previous numbers if I do it within seven days. If I wait three more days or four more days, generally with the upper body stuff, it, it, my recovery rate with the grappling sessions, three to four grappling sessions a week, is ten to twelve days. So not in seven days, but 10 to 12 days, I can repeat the session and I will have added a rep or I will have added a kilo. Great progress. With the squats and deadlifts, lower body stuff, it takes a few more, couple more days more recovery, you know, because they're just so taxing. So yeah. it, will, it can take 14, 15 days. How old are you? Uh, 30. Okay, you're a young buck, man. Man, I've got you're enough young, grey hair though, bro. Yeah, but you're young though. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah. So I'm 38. Yeah. Um, I think at 30... You're kind of in your prime, bruv, I would say. I feel better than ever, man. Yeah, you, feel, you kind of feel like, even me at 30, I'm not, I don't feel, don't get me wrong. Like, especially I think with grappling, um, you can go, if, if you train smart and everything, you can train quite a bit. This is the thing. Do you know you what I'm saying? Smart. You train and if smart. you're in the right club as well, if they're not smashing you every yeah. session. Exactly. Exactly that. That is annoying. Like, you shouldn't be getting smashed every single session. Oh, man, you train hard. Yeah. You've got to train hard every day. But, bro, That's listen, like, man. I've, I've, you're telling me to train hard. I've come in, like, you know, three times already this week. I've got a family. I'm late yeah. 30s or whatever. Yeah. You can't compare me to, to someone else. He's in his know? 20s. It's not. It's but even in your 20s, don't, don't you think, bro? Like, you, you should train hard. Especially if you're mm-hmm. competing, you mm-hmm. should train hard. Train yeah. Hard, yeah. But, I think there's a diminishing returns with that. If it's, you're getting smashed every single day, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're gonna get injured. I obviously some of the guys at the gym, bro. Every week they've got something strapped up. I'm like, bro, you're in the twenties. Okay. How are you walking around like, um, like? Do you know what I mean? The amount of people out there that are like, you know, even guys that are are, are professional mm. or aspiring professionals, bro. I'm gonna say I'm good. I'm just gonna finish this. Got this got thing, yeah. Thank you. Um, I train four to six hours a day. Now, bear in mind, at Purple Belt, I was training four to six hours a day, legit. Not just in the gym, sitting there watching. Yeah. I was doing two hours of drilling a day, two hours sparring a day, five days a week. This is where the injuries came in. Yeah. This is where they started to. And that was, that was mid-20s, man. Yeah. Like, doing too much is... There's only so much your body can do. If I said to you, all right, you have to squat on Monday yeah. for a PB. Yeah, you, you go squat. Whatever the numbers are, 10 to 12, even 15 for a PB. Let's go. Tuesday, doing it again. Wednesday, you're doing it again. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you really think that by Friday, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. You would have hit it on Monday. You won't hit it on Tuesday yeah. or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. So, one out of five days, you're hitting that. So, why do people think with grappling, it's exactly so I'm going to go all out on Monday and I'm going to go all out on Tuesday, all out on Wednesday, multiple hours a day? Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, you can't just study for six hours straight. Yeah. It's the same with jujitsu. If you want to do it every day, do four or five rounds a day. Yeah. Yeah, maybe even three or four. If you can't take that, you have to be honest with yourself. I can only do this. I prefer, I'll train hard on Monday, six to eight rounds. I like to take Tuesday, like for example, off and then go again on Wednesday and have a day or two off and then go go hard again on Saturday. When I'm then at 33 with the guys, I might do some reps and some light yeah. drilling and some going over uh, a few things, but it won't be hard spot. Exactly. It won't be like hard spot. It won't be hard sparring for me, you know? Um, But what would you reckon in a month, yeah? Mm. How how often should you spar hard? That depends on... uh, So obviously you've got, if you're competing, so outside of competition. Yeah. So like obviously with competition, you've got to look at ramping it up and then bringing it back down just before competition, right? That's kind of like normally how it Mm. works. So... You kind of like build up the the critical mass of like training hard, training hard, and then you kind of bring it down. So when you when you're about to compete, you're not 
burnt out or mm-hmm. injured or whatever. Yeah. So, and how often should you compete a year? So that's another thing. Because uh, a lot of people ask, what, I'm sure people are listening and they're wondering like, okay, I'm a blue belt or a white belt. How often should I compete? Mm. What's kind of, I'm guessing there's not one right answer for this, but if you could give us some, a bit of advice, mm. what you would give to your students in regards okay, to competing training? So what I would give, training give to my guys who have full-time jobs and yeah. that are, are training as a hobby because they love it. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get in two to three, two to three sessions a week, if you can come to two sessions with me a week, yeah. where it's an hour session, half an hour of drilling and half an hour of sparring, yeah. and then one open mat, let's say 10th Planet open mat on a, on a Saturday, yeah. fantastic. So you know? two, two, two sessions with you, See, two one sessions open mat. Where we oh. do the same techniques for six, about four to six weeks. Right. So you know what's happening in the session. We're sticking on the same um, topic for four to six weeks. You're getting half an hour of, of quality sparring on the Tuesday, half an hour of quality sparring on the, on the second session. And then you're going to an open mat and you can do four, six, eight rounds if, if you wanted to. That'll be enough for the, for the average person who's just right. who's doing it as a hobby. If you're doing it a uh, professional, or you're an aspiring professional, uh, you, you kind of have to use your discretion, but I would say you can go, you could go four to five grappling sessions a week but you can't be doing four to five hours a day. Right. You know, all the guys that, that say to me, yeah, oh, no, yeah, but on, on real talk though, yeah, bro, real yeah, talk, yeah. four to five hours a day. Yeah. You're telling me, yeah. you punch your ticket in and you're training for four to five hours and then yeah. you're leaving. Well, that's bonkers, well, Guys bro. might train two hours in the morning and, and then two more hours. In right, the, so you're splitting it up. So they might do an hour of drilling, an hour of sparring, right. and then an hour of drilling, an hour of sparring. But it's four hours. You've done that is four an, hours, an, hour, right. an hour of each, you know? But, there's no way that the, the second slot in the day was as good as the first mm. slot. There's no way. But what, what, why, what's, so what are you, so is sparring or are you working on dr- drilling or is it just, so when you say four hours of training, what does that look like? Well, is it could it, be an hour of drilling, an hour of sparring. Right. Hour of drilling, an hour of sparring. Right. So two hours you know? of sparring. But let's day. just say, this is, this is, this is, this is not me though. Yeah. You know, that I was doing that at Purple Belt, but this is, this is definitely not me now. But you know, I know there's some some guys out there doing that, but they're gonna be broken, man. Yeah. They're literally gonna be broken. Like you could do your, you know, do your hour of sparring in the in the in the middle of the day when you're fresh, and do your hour of drilling at night time. Oh, I see what you see. Yeah. yeah, naturally, every the sun's going down. You should be getting ready to yeah. to wind down as well. That's when you that's when you do your drilling. There's only so much you can do. It's not more is better. It's not like oh, you know what. I'm not going to eat 3,000 calories a day. I'm going to eat 5,000 calories a day and it's all going to turn to muscle. Now, bro, you're just going to get fat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's the, the, a picture of too, too legit to quit, bro. Because those the, ones. the body yeah. is like, it, it, it doesn't just convert all those excess calories to, 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 to muscle. Only a fraction will get converted. So it's like training. All right, I want to get good. Like, all right, attack your sessions with focus, with intensity, with, um, with goals, like what you want during, during that. Not just turn up what we're doing today. Oh, just go through the motions multiple times a week, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm going to improve. Like you don't turn up to school and just cause you're there, yeah. you're going to pass the exams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The clever people at school, they might have done no homework all year. And then when it came to the exams, they just got the three past three years practice papers and were like, you know, the examiners are pretty lazy. They yeah. just, you know, all the questions are more or less going to be the same, you know, and they, they're the, they're the A grade, A star yeah. grade, grade people. I did notice one thing, I think a few years ago, cause I was struggling with jujitsu, bro. I still am, bro. I'm going to lie to you, bro. I'm still struggling. Yeah. Um, but I got frustrated, bro. Mm. Like I got to a point, I was like, well, I don't want to do this anymore, man. Mm. What am I doing, man? A grown man in a pajamas, brother, and getting s- s- strangled. Like, uh, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I, you kind of like lose a bit of. Uh, so I thought, you know what? I went back to my kind of because I trained as a teacher. Yeah. So I bought this book called. Uh, oh my god, what was it called? Something blue belt handbook or something. So it was a white belt. Yeah. So he's a guy. He wrote his um, his experiences as a white belt and what he did to get to his blue less less about the belt more about level Mm -hmm. does that make sense Mm -hmm. so to to get himself to a blue belt level because for me the belts it's just a consequence of what you're doing it Mm -hmm. shouldn't be why you're doing what you're doing no it definitely shouldn't be why you're doing exactly you should you should it's just you shouldn't and i think that that there's a a big difference between there's a belt but everyone that walks in is going to absolutely murk you exactly what's the point of that bro what's the point yeah so 
So what I, I kind of read, and he talked about, and it's the first time I've heard this in a m- grappling, co- he's talking about concepts. I was like, what the hell is he mm. talking about concepts? Okay. Mm. So he's, he, he was like, for example, um, when someone, if, if someone establishes grips on you, mm. yeah, and I've never thought of it like this, yeah? Mm. Someone, someone's got grips on you. It, it could be it could be wrist, it could be whatever it is, uh, sleeve grip. Uh, he says that they're controlling you. Yeah. So, typical white belt, when I used to get, I'm just trying to trying to control them. Like, I didn't even think about breaking, and it's mm. stupid, yeah? But when you're starting mm. off your journey, mm-hmm. you're not thinking of it like that yeah. during the role. Yeah. Outside the role is different. Mm-hmm. But during the role, when, when things are happening, you're not thinking to yourself, you know what? Let me break the grips first. I remember Shamo telling me this as well, because I was rolling with him. And like, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm bigger than him, you know, you're kind of trying to use your, you know, the spazzy white belt type situation, yeah. So when I read that, but he said it to me, then he, and he repeated it back. And then Kit Dale, I remember, used to talk about this as well. Um, so for example, controlling front headlock, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, front headlock is about controlling the body. It's not mm. just controlling the head. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you get that in your head, you're like, okay, I'm controlling his body. And then again, just break front headlock is a major position, no gi, and it's a relatively rare position yeah. in the gi. My favorite position, by the way. Bro, front headlock. I love it's front It's going to happen all the time. Yeah. It's like, if the guy shoots and you sprawl, front headlock. Yeah. If you snap him down, front headlock. It's going to happen yes. all the time. And people, no it's very hard to defend your head because uh, your head's kind of... How do I put this? It's, it's it's the last thing you're thinking about, right? When you're doing so, when you when you're in transition or whatever, yeah. Um, so for me, front headlock is my, one of my favorite because of the wrestling side of things, and you drill a lot of controlling the head. Got that and, guillotine, exactly, that right there, right? exactly. Like, Darcy's guillotines, anacondas. It's, um, it's all well and good to say, oh yeah, but when you can't in in, in a double, you just put your head in the middle and stuff like. But things happen, man. Your head is going to naturally slip to the outside somewhere, especially when I, when you want to change the angle on that. Yeah. Yep. So the guillotine is and front head lock to guillotine is always going to be present as long as you're aware of that. Then you can deal with it, but it's 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 not something that you can stop happening. Yes, you, you can have react to, to it. trade off, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to take down fine, but be prepared. Your head's going to get grabbed. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Hundred percent. So. So for me, it's like, I ha- like at that point, this was about a couple of years ago. At that point, I, I was like, you know what? This is not, this is something you've got to use your brain for, bro. Yeah. I sound stupid, bro, but no, like, uh, so I kind of, like, so now when I roll, I've got, like you said, always have a goal in it. So mm. if I'm rolling with a higher belt, and this is another thing he said in that book, was that if you're rolling with someone who's more advanced than you, don't worry about submissions. Take that out of your mind for a little bit. That'll, that'll relieve the pressure a little bit, mm-hmm. yeah? Just couldn't make sure that you're not letting them control you. You're not let, um, if, if you're in their guard, break the guard, escape, try and, try and, does that make sense? But if you put that pressure of like, I need to go for a submission, the guy's, you've got like a spoon, he's got like a Swiss army knife for like, re, re, do you see what I'm saying? You'll get to that point one day, but again, understand where you are. In, in your with that person and how how where his skills are where your skills are and that way you get more out of your role and only then did I just realize that okay I can actually start getting things out of it now when I'm rolling um, and I think well I've been speaking to Max as well like and he, he speaks very highly of you okay? well, great guy uh, he's a good guy man. great guy um, I tease him so much <laughs> I say because it's love you know yeah of course of course guy. of course yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah like um he comes with that same attitude. He looks like you've, uh, he's very, what's the word? I see that in you as well. Like, uh, it looks like you've given him that, you know, that culture in it from your club. Or was that? He's very inquisitive. He's not, he doesn't come with a, uh, what's the word? A glass full. Especially some guys who do jiu-jitsu. Mm. When they come to Legion, when they do wrestling, they don't want to, they want to <laughs> do how does this apply to a jiu- jiu-jitsu? Instead of actually just learn the art, mm-hmm. you'll figure that out later mm-hmm. off the mat somewhere else. But here you learn wrestling for wrestling, innit? Yeah. Then you'll get the full benefits of it. Yeah. Not, cause I, I really cringe when I hear wrestling for jiu-jitsu cause it's kind of like a cliche now, bro. You can't, you can't wrestle for, you got to wrestle for wrestling and then you figure it out. Cause everyone's got their own style, innit? Wrestling for wrestling. It's like grappling takedowns for jiu-jitsu. This is it. You know, but you have to, 
you have to learn the one and be experienced enough to be able to adapt it for that. Because if I go to if I go to a wrestling session, yeah, yeah. To, I mean, I haven't been to Legion just because I've been yeah, you've I've been, had so much yeah, going on. Course, I mean, yeah, but yeah. you know, great sessions. But there's. 60 to 70% of that isn't going to apply or yes. needs to be adapted for jujitsu. 100%. Now, if you're not experienced enough, you won't be able to do that. No. I can do it, you know. Coach Amir can show me like some wicked amazing things and straight away I'll be able to be like, right, one out of four of those things I can use straight away. Mm. You know, other things are great, but it's, it's, it's grappling to a different rule set. This is it. That's what I was going to say. Know? The rule set is completely it. different. So, different, so but I think what you get from, from training wrestling for wrestling is other things like pressure, you know, learning how mm. to put pressure, learning how, I think, uh, uh, athleticism, you know, strength. It's yeah. a different type of strength when you do wrestling. Does that make it sense? It adds a whole different dimension. Mindset. To your jujitsu as well. hundred percent. So th that's what I mean by learn wrestling for that. Come in there, come with an open mind. Don't think, okay, when you're in a lesson, of course you have to adapt to the jujitsu. No, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? That, don't be trying to do your jiu-jitsu in a, in a, in a wrestling, wrestling class. No, like, let, because you're not going to get the benefits yeah. of it. Do you no, see no, what I'm no, saying? No. Um, and if you look closely as well, you'll see the submissions in wrestling. Yes. You'll see it. Yes. You'll see that. Okay, they've taken it. I mean, I was speaking to Coach Amir uh, a few years ago and he was, because you know that this is, uh, for example, front headlock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now your front headlock, you grab the chin and grab the tricep, you know, he goes, if you look at it, that's a guillotine right there. It's just the reason they put that in is because of the Olympic rule set. Yes. There's, for example, the leg lace. I don't know if you've seen the leg lace when they wrap the legs. Yeah, so yeah. They, they that, get, that's actually one thing uh, that actually I need to actually study. I'm, I'm actually quite confused with it because it doesn't, it's not like in jiu-jitsu. I know it's something to do with, So you, you need to turn, turn them over. Turn them over, expose their back. Yeah, but I've me, seen yeah. that they grab the legs. So imagine the legs are crossed like this and you put the arms underneath. So you've, you've controlling both legs. Yes. And basically turning them, turning the legs so their back is exposed. So control, so literally lifting the legs above their, their hips. So it's a turnover. Yeah. But if you think about it, I'm pretty sure Snake Pit or those guys use it as some sort of probably. crank yeah, of some probably. sort. Yeah. Yeah. Um, things like, for example, when you're on the back and you turn their head in this way. Yes. That's another crank. There's yeah. more cranks than chokes, to be honest with you. Yeah. Sorry. Twister is actually a leg ride. Uh, Twister. That's it's it. a leg ride. Yeah. yeah. So there are things in, in wrestling. If yeah, you look yeah. closely. That video uh, you guys posted, or maybe it was on a Legion page of the, of the, of the front headlock, uh, smashing, smashing the arm cross rolling underneath and the other guy went to sleep. That's right. That's right. That's an uh, uh, upside down arm triangle. There you go. Bro. You know, it's, 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 all, um, so it's there's, still grappling, you know? still grappling in it. But I think rules, like you said, rule sets are the things that make that, Again, I think the, did you see the new Snake Pit Championships? Saw that, yeah, yeah. That I saw looks the, I saw sick, the, man. What, where, where can we watch that though? Do you know where we can watch it? I saw it, I just came across it actually yesterday. So. Yeah, okay, I wish, uh, I want to watch a whole match because I, I think the rule sets are slightly. I think there's no guard. You can, you can pin. You can pin. Um, you can submit obviously and pin. Yeah. There's no guard. I don't, probably, I, don't, probably, I, don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the, like the submissions, because it'd be catch, it'd be the submissions would be off of, you go to take the guy down, he, he balls up to turtle and then you, you, you lock off a submission from there. But if you, right. if it's God, then his back would surely course, be on, course. on yeah, the Yeah, yeah, that's right? true. That would so be a pin, right? Or going on another thing is that yeah. these are the three aspects to Nogi Jiu Jitsu that have to be trained. So you have to train, let's, let's not call it rest. Let's call it takedowns. Takedowns, takedowns yeah. only. Yeah. Um, and then, I call it, I call it catch wrestling. That's right. just what I call it, you know, yeah. is where you spar with, you're not allowed to do guard. So you spar with, uh, with the takedowns, but you, all the submissions, the submissions are there. You can't do guard. Um, so that's when all these opportunities will open up is it will help the timing of, oh, the guy shoots and you oh, snap the guillotine, you know, all the, you know, really trying to, really trying to turn the guy over. You're still trying to pin him and get his back to the ground, but the submissions are added in there. Yeah. And then you've got no gi jiu jitsu training where you, you know, you start from the feet and, God is valid. Yes. Those three aspects, you cover those three aspects, you've covered everything. Because usually what people do, this is what usually what people do, is they train the takedowns or wrestling and then they train the, the nogi grappling jiu-jitsu, but they don't train that um, that intermediary uh, position, the catch wrestling, or yeah. whatever you want to call it. It's, it's wrestling or grappling so takedowns with submissions. So, think, so give me an example of that because I'm so just trying to let's say, in my head. Let's say we do... Uh, takedown rounds. Yeah. And as soon as uh, 
your back is on the ground and control for three seconds. We stand back up again, go oh. again. Yeah, that's, that's the take. That's quite sick. That's the takedown rules. I do, I do quite a bit of that. Okay. And then, the, then the regular jiu-jitsu rules that isn't, you know, normal jiu-jitsu training. We shake hands, go, we start, we start from the feet. Whatever happens, happens. But the catch wrestling intermediary phase, we start, we start going for our, our t- there's no guard. Basically, it's just imagine the jiu-jitsu. Um, so we start phase. from standing. We start from standing, but there's no we guard. Go, we go take down. Yeah, but there's no guard. Can, first, you can't pull guard. That's number one. But yeah. number two, if you get taken down, you can't cl- use close guard. You can't use any guard. So you've right. got, you've got, a, you've got to t- turn all fours and try and wrestle back up again. But this um, is where the submissions are gonna are gonna come in. So that that intermediary stage there is the blending process between the stand up and the ground game. And if you're missing that out, then your time is gonna be off when guys shoot on you, snagging that guillotine, you know? The, the submission opportunities right, that Because you would will normally happen. pull guard in that situation or so, for example, if someone's double legged you, yeah. it's the easiest thing is to close, which is not, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just yeah. you. But I'm saying this way, if you put that limitation in yeah. there, no guard allowed. Yeah, then you've kind of yeah. have to think outside so the box a little bit. Jiu Jitsu training, no guard, but you can do submissions. Right. So, if you. If so, you, give me another thing. So, apart yeah, from, yeah. from guillotines, yeah. what other things would, would fit in that kind of middle? Oh, man, the front headlock is going to the front, front headlock, headlock is going to be yeah. there. You can, um, you could, you could jump on their back and then get a bar, a bar across there because you're still trying to turn them over and put their back on the ground. Right. So you can still win, but all the submissions are there as well. So you've now blended wrestling or takedowns with the jujitsu. So the middle part is number one, expose their back to the mat and pin yeah. them. Yeah. Or submit them. Or, sub- or submit them. No guard is allowed. So, so you can pin them yeah. and you'd win. Yeah. Or submit them and win. Yeah. Well, I like that one. So these are the three. These are the, the and you do that in your classes. Yeah, yeah, this is what I get the guys That's doing. Quite sick. So we do, we do. Sometimes we do um, regular straight takedown rounds, no submissions. Phase. That, that's so just re- called re- wrestling okay. yeah. takedowns. Yeah, wrestling. Yeah. No, I just call it wrestling. Yeah, I call Sorry. it. Um, and the second one, I call it. I call it catch rules. Right. I don't know what catch rules are, but I just call it catch rules. Call it something. Yeah. yeah? No guard. Right. No Everything guard. but guard. Right? right. So you, if you're gonna. If your back is going to hit the ground, let's say you've got to control it for three seconds, you've got to turn, you've got to scramble away, you've got to get to all fours, you've got to. You've so, got how, to do you turn stop it them, how do you stop them from giving their back in that situation? Because in wrestling, obviously, we turn around yeah. and defend. No, you, but you so, have to, yeah, you're going to have to give, you're going to have to give your back and you're going to have to try and switch and turn back it and so turn back you into scramble them. into kind of, ah. Oh. Yeah, it's just no God. Everything else is, everything else. So what, doing what that. What made you, what made you? Because uh, I recognised it was an element that was missing, but definitely from my training. And I, and I noticed that most guys are doing takedowns only or jujitsu only. They're not blending them together, mm. you know? Um, and definitely going to go away with this. Isn't definitely, yeah, yeah. It really, that it does really, make sense. It really Because that's sense, something man. I know um, Coach Amir has talk, talked about quite a bit because we were floating the idea of having, because when we first started uh, Jiu Jitsu, we were going to have another thing called submission wrestling. Trust yeah. Me. So it was going to be, really, it was going to be its own system with its own belting system. So it'd be like um, basically catch wrestling. Mm. But again, he's teaching almost every day and he was trying to develop that system. Cause everything had to, with us, we have to write everything down mm-hmm. and it has to be systemized. Otherwise we don't do it. <laughs> There's no point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He has to um, stand the test of time and, it's, and you need to be able to take your student from A to B to C to D to E so that you're building proper competent grapplers isn't it? not people that have got, you know, gaps in their game, you know, but yeah, submission wrestling is, and you kind of hit the nail on the head because that perked my uh, submission. Wrestling. Yes. Yeah. So no guard. So you're trying to turn them over and get their back to the mat. They don't want because they, their back's to the mat, they're going to lose. But you've got all the cranks, you've got all the arm yeah. locks. And and, and um, front head lock, you get an underhook. You know, you you, you shelf the, the arm up yeah. onto your shoulder yeah. and you turn them over. Yeah. Yeah. Their arm's behind their back there. You could snag that. You could yes. start to twist that up. All these things start to appear that wouldn't appear in a wrestling situation and that wouldn't appear in a jiu-jitsu only situation because the guy might just be forced out, sit back from front head lock up in your front head. Oh, I might just sit back to yeah. sit back to guard. You know, it's not that same intensity of, oh, I can't put my back on the ground. Made so it gives you that, it gives training. you that, um, that urgency. Yeah. Because then if you're in your back in jiu-jitsu, yeah. You You're can cool. start working from, start working yeah, from yeah. there. But whereas in, in the catch wrestling scenario... You take that away, you've got to work on your wrestling and your submissions mm. together. It's 
That is really good. It's man. really good. It's 100%. really, honestly, it's like, I only really started doing that over the past couple of months. And it's, it's made such a huge difference so far. It, it really, it really has. If you're not doing that, that you're going to get well. shocked when someone shoots on you and you're going to, oh, and you might mess up the guillotine. But if you're constantly doing that kind of, that kind of training, then it's, it's, it's in your muscle memory. That is sick, bro. It's right there. Yeah. Um, I had a question that I was going to ask you, man. I completely forgot now. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, why do you think that we don't many, we get many catch wrestlers Firstly, why doesn't he get enough uh, airtime, bro? Just more or less died out, didn't it? Yeah, but it's like, it's so effective, man. It is. And, I, and um, actually, you know, uh, Imran, you know the last competition? Ibrahim fought a catch wrestler from Snake Pit, I think. He was a young kid, yeah, he was a the junior. The guy's kind of more or less in the UK. But he loved, he loved right? the fact that they were going for takedowns. It was, mm. he loved, it was, there was a lot cool. of love after the... the um, but yeah, his, uh, you could see his style was was very different from um but you don't see many catch wrestlers kind of i guess i guess there's not enough of them right maybe yeah it'd be good to kind of see that transition in it or even but definitely i'm going to try and find out where we can watch that snake pit uh yeah. championships yeah. i saw some clips or photographs look quite sick yeah yeah because yeah. i saw bridging in there i was like why is he bridging don't want to get the back on the ground, don't it? There you go, yeah, bro. Right, so right. yeah, okay. So it, it, made, it made sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like that, like died out in the early twenty. I know, like catch wrestling died out in the early um, twentieth century because they they took that it was, to to Japan, right? So Japan, so, so yeah. the Japanese actually took catch wrestling from England, which I didn't realize. And you got pro wrestling branch off of that, but you got that, freestyle yeah. wrestling branch off that. But yeah. so you took the submissions yeah, out, yeah, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, but I mean, you it's crazy, isn't a it? Brilliant art. Oh, you know? it, just, it just didn't get branded properly. Like, you know, Jiu Jitsu, the, the one thing that Jiu Jitsu did is packaged it. Yeah. In a, and I think, I think the way it was, it, I would say, we, I, got, I'm not, I don't want to talk about knowledge, but what kind of circles was, was catch wrestling? Was it more of a working class sport? Was it more I of a middle? So. No, Do you know what so. I'm saying, bro? It's very working class. Yeah. So Jiu Jitsu is a like middle class sport. Minus and stuff. Yeah, there like you go, minus bro. Minus and stuff, man. So that that will fit the whole bare knuckle, catch wrestling, you know, boxing even. Yeah. But Jiu Jitsu was more of a middle class sport. If, if if you look at it, how I mean, I think the Graces were a middle class family, you know, and they, they and I know when they came to the to the US, they taught people who had money, innit? it. It wasn't. It wasn't cheap to do. Jiu -Jitsu, it wasn't cheap. Man. Yeah. So I guess maybe that's why it didn't catch to for for um, no pun intended. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, you catch yeah, on, yeah. but definitely I wanna. I wanted to get. Um, I don't know one guy. Is this? Is this? Uh, there's. Is this here in UK? That sneak bit, yeah. Okay, there you go. So no back. So look, no, but go back, go back, rewind that for a little bit. So that's just exactly what you just said. Uh, but wait, go back. That's one's a catch wrestler. The other one's a jiu jitsu guy. Wait, wait, sure. wait. Which guy is the? I think the guy with the shorts. So I'm assuming that these these rules are you can't put your back on the ground or so shoulder that, blades on the ground, is it? I think so. Look, he's got the neck crank on there. Yeah, see all that turnover stuff, that near yeah. side half Nelson neck neck yeah. crank turnover stuff. Yeah. How would that apply to jujitsu fights though? But um how how would that translate over? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like well, if you just wanted, if you just wanted, is that even allowed? Yeah, if you just wanted someone's someone's back on it. Say, let's say you were turtle, you yeah. couldn't get your hooks in. You just go near side half Nelson with the bar in, lift your elbow, and you're starting okay. to turn them over, and then you could slip to the mountain and start to attack. But there, there might be some moves in in catch wrestling that is not is not legal, right? I think because there's some things in jiu jitsu you can't. I know. Um, like cranks. Yeah. You're not allowed to do cranks, But, but you right? can in uh, in a lot of the modern uh, Nogi submission only rule sets. Right. You can neck crank. It's fine. It's just like lower level, um, lower level So white belts and, and blue belts. and depends. It really does depend on, on the promotion. On, on, the, on the competition. Oh, this is the like, rule set. Yeah. Like, like, gi, like gi, for example, gi, um, gi, gi you, you can't heel hook. It's, of course, you know, yeah. there's, there's a lot of friction. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. some of the, the the rules with the leg lock is like you can you can go for a straight foot lock gi, but you can't turn in a reaping direction, right. even though it's rare for somebody to hurt their knee. 
from, from it being reaped. Right. But you can turn in that direction if the guy turns first. It's just like... Okay, right, right, right. right. Yeah. I wonder how they come up with these, man. Yeah. Because they must have had a conversation around like... I like think, injuries and honestly, stuff, it? it's to do with fear of something that you don't understand. Like yeah. when those rules were brought in, it's like fear. Oh, heel hooks. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, not so much heel hooks, but oh yeah, reaping the leg. Oh yeah, it's going to hurt people's knee because you saw like one guy get his knee. But do you reckon commercialism as well, like being a co- trying to make it commercial? So for example, in MMA, yeah, yeah. you can't strike. Yeah, but, uh, that, that was origin- but that was originally brought in because... Um, the the uh, the governing board, the commission, yeah. had seen karate guys breaking, yeah, yeah, and breaking, so like, oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah. <laughs> but surely you can generate more power, like cracking someone like that, yeah. and then like, then that, you know, <laughs> bang, Zach, like, bring you know? up the bring up the rules again, bro. It doesn't. It just doesn't. Some yeah, things just don't make like, sense. Yeah, look, God, this is catch wrestling. So, rules, so what's yeah? that catch wrestling? Bro, but beg you, make it bigger, please. And yeah, this is a snake pit one. So, so ankle lock, knee lock. What's a knee lock, bro? Knee bar. Missing is a knee bar, yeah? Knee bar. Okay, right. Hip lock. What's that, bro? Oh, a hip lock. Um, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, you go to you go to cross Ashy. Yeah. It's also called a Z lock as well. You grab their foot and you, and you start to, you're starting to basically, oh, sorry, I just got cramp. Oh, oh you're right. <laughs> oh, in your foot? No, in my, in, my, in my hamstring. Oh, easy, bro. Oh, can I stand up? Yeah, yeah, of sorry, course bro. you can. Of course you can. <laughs> No, I proper got proper got cramped there. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Do you want to massage your feet? No, all right, bro. It's, it's, it's easing off now. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us, bro. <laughs> it's still dead. Is it deadlift day today? No, it's not been in a while. I need <laughs> oh, to do them again. That's <laughs> yeah. the... Basically, a hip lock is like when the leg is bent and you you, you take the heel and you're turning. Imagine you're grabbing oh, my wait. Heel. Oh, so you're turning way. it up like. Oh. Yeah, so it's going to come on so the hip. You're, you're going like this, basically. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah, oh, you yeah. you can find it on YouTube. It'd be called a, a, a Z lock, spine lock. I don't know what that is, bro. Well, it's, yeah, it's a spine like 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 for example, twister. Oh, a twister. It's a twister. Okay, spine, yeah, spine yeah, yeah. lock. Shoulder or, or lock. Or ne- or, Shoulder lock is a kimura, right? So that's just, so these are all acceptable. Yeah, right? well, yeah. neck lock, spine lock. Yeah, same thing. Elbow Shoulder lock. lock. I love the fact that they refuse to use jitsu. Yeah, 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 yeah. No kimura. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bent arm lock. Yeah, that's, figure four. <laughs> that's it, bro. Hand lock. What's a hand lock, bro? Wrist lock, bro. I'm guessing it's a wrist yeah. lock. Yeah. Okay. No, like a wrist lock. Yeah, look. Indirect ah. choke. So what's a hand, so what's a hand lock, bro? I have no idea, bro. Uh, so you're not allowed to punch or slap. Okay, fair enough. Uh, kicking. Oh, wait, one sec. Go up a sec, sir. Like so, in di- so an indirect choke or so, for example, an inside arm front face lock, grovet. Oh, that's a front head lock coming over the coming over the face there. That's a that. So you're not Billy allowed Robinson, to do a rear naked then. So rear naked choke is not so, allowed. Wait, that's so that's acceptable. So in an indirect an indirect choke or strangle is accept. I'm well, guessing, so a direct I'm guessing, choke isn't allowed then. So I'm guessing it's more like you know. Um, so you've got to have the arm stuff. in. Yeah, the arm. Like so in you wrestling. have to have an arm in. So go oh. down see if there's um if you're allowed to do a rear naked. Oh, direct just contact with the neck. So you can't have a rear naked. You ah. can't have a guillotine with no arm in. So you can break people's hands and, and elbows, yeah, yeah but <laughs> like rear naked choke, no. Yeah, can't have a full Nelson. Can't have a full Nelson, but you can do a neck crank. Yeah. It's a bit strange. Is it because you're isolating? So with a full Nelson, it's when you're, when you're, ha- yeah, when you're, doing, when you're pushing your neck forward, right? Yeah. No talking or making noise. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't say tap. That's why you can't do a full Nelson. You can't tap. You can't tap. <laughs> so no talking or making noise in the match. Disqualification Silence. as well. That's well, I love that, bro. Hey, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> go up, go up. Let's see the matches. Go down. Are these are these not the down? Down. We used. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Is this oh, from their website? Is that? Yeah. This Snake Pit Wigan. Oh, okay. Interesting. So pretty much a crime. Uh, wrestlers must attend. Okay. No, so. Yeah, I love this. Wrestlers must ensure that their skin is dry of oil. Yeah. <laughs> Grease. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're naturally greasy though? Would you just, <laughs> like you, Zach? Yeah, man. <laughs> need, a, need, need, need to shake the shower, man. <laughs> Can't be walking around greasy. Uh, okay. Go scroll down. Scroll down. Okay, so what's the time scale? Wrestlers must be warmed up. Da, 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 one minute. How long's the match though? Length of the match is here we go. There were no guidelines, no time scale. Okay, so this is like submission only. Okay, scroll down. So um 
Zach, what do you think about, um, so for example, uh, we were thinking about holding a, a, a competition. So we've, got, uh, we've been talking about this for a few years. I want to kind of mix wrestling and jiu-jitsu basically. So I was, think, was thinking of doing something where to encourage people to wrestle. So for example, um, having a competition where the first minute you're not allowed to pull guard. So after that first minute, you can pull guard, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, it must be even like a catch wrestling situation mm -hmm. where um, just to kind of get people, I guess it's a bit more exciting as well. So if you're kind yeah. of, but do you, think, do, you, do you think that it's gonna turn, like it will stop people from entering? I don't so know. say if you're a black belt in jiu-jitsu for yeah. example yeah? yeah and you enter a competition that right the first minute you're not allowed or first two minutes whatever it is yeah you're not allowed to take down I'm um, sorry not allowed to pull guard I don't think it, I don't think it will stop people people entering um, you know if if the incentive is there for example they get something from it then they, they it wouldn't stop people um, but yeah it's, there's, there's, there's two ways to to go about that that, that problem yeah it's either addressing it like that, like catch wrestling, no, no, no guard. No guard, yeah. Or if you want to pull guard, that's fine, but we'll take two or three points off you. Ooh. So now you- Have you seen comps like that? I, I don't no. think so. No. no. But like, you know, not like one point, we'll take two or three off of you. Right. So you've got to make that decision. So if I pull guard- At let's any say, time? Let's say In the match? Example, let's say, for example, if I pull guard and I go down two or three points- yeah, let's say, let's say I go down, let's say it's two points. Yeah, so I pull guard and down by two points. If I get my sweep now, now it's just even. It's even, right. Or if it's, or if it's a really going to punish them for going, pulling guard, three points. So now, even if you sweep me, you're still one point behind. Right. So now you need to pass as but well. But do we want to pull, punish guard pull as well? I don't. You do, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I never said it. <laughs> just give me ideas, man. You got a lot of ideas, though. Yeah, ideas, man. <laughs> no, but like, you know what? You know what it is? I know we joke about this, bro. Yeah, honestly, yeah. yeah. I don't have any problem with people pull guard, yeah. I really don't, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not even a... It's just because it's like in the... In the, in the in the, in the jiu-jitsu verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah, you get yeah. me? There's yeah, the, yeah. there's the, the, the guys who do takedowns. But really, it's all love, isn't it? It's yeah, all yeah, different yeah, yeah. styles. It's all... Um, yeah. But if, if you're coming up against a superior wrestler, then yeah. the smart thing would be to, to pull, pull guard. guard. Exactly. It, yeah. I mean, you've got, you got two options. You either, you either pull guard um, or you let... Or you're going to get taken down. Yeah. You well, know? let them take you down. But then if there's points involved... No points. Imagine it's no points. It's no points. Then, then you know, you can think to yourself, right, there's no points involved. I'll either pull guard straight away yeah. Or I'm going to let them take me down, but they might take me down so hard that it's going to hurt. Yeah. Do you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, your yeah, choice. Yeah. That's yeah, your, yeah. that's your, that's your decision to make right there. You know, I've, 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 I think for me as a fan watching. Yeah. Yeah. I love watching guys who can wrestle that do jiu -jitsu. I feel yeah. like that's the most exciting thing. Yeah. Well so if you get it. two guys that know how to wrestle, like for example, Galvao. Galvao's got really good wrestling, bro. Uh, so someone like Galvao and uh, who else? Uh, Buchecha, bro. They got decent stand up. Uh, Cyborg, decent stand up, you know? Um, and watching them kind of like that for me is like, I love watching that kind of uh, just, just from a fan's point of view. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's guys that mix it up quite well. Like Gordon Ryan doesn't do many takedowns. But he's exciting to watch, Rov. Do you know what I'm saying? It's all monsters of jujitsu. This is it, Rov. Like yeah. he, so it's not, it's not like. A, but I think everyone's got their own, you know, flavor. What they like, innit? Yeah, um, definitely. But I really find Gordon Rov very exciting. I like uh, even Craig Gordon as well. Is it Craig Gordon? Craig Jones. Is it Craig Jones? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's Craig Gordon, Rov? He just made it up, bro. I just made it. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Jones. He's quite yeah, exciting yeah. to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gary Tonin. Yes. Yeah, his takedowns are really he's good, a, but a, also like savages of exactly, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's not like they've proved they've they've proven that you know what you don't have to you can still pull guard and and or even just play that kind of game yeah, and, like and like be you exciting. Could take like you could have like great takedowns, but then in a match where you know, like I keep saying, but in a match where you know, like oh, this, this this I think this guy's got to edge me. In the yes. Takedown. Let me pull guard. Let yeah. me get my guard working, yeah. or maybe wrestle up. You know, like we saw it um, yesterday at the competition with Max, like it, this was like his fourth or fifth match, yeah? yeah. Semi-finals. 
and the the guy Max says Max is Max is Paul God. Um, Max, we're gonna have to have a word later. Bro. <laughs> Next time you come, and, I'm joking. I'm joking. And, uh, <laughs> so, but the guy is like punishing with him, knee cup. Right. I'm like, oh man, I think you're gonna you're gonna lose the semi finals here. But as the guy's cutting through with the knee cut, he's managed to get oh. the underhook, come up to the dog fight, and nice. then run down from one side of the mat to the other. He's done it three times. Nice. You know? And yeah, it was, so it was a six point. That was a six point win. So he's used the rest so when of you from say, underneath. So when you say running him. Yeah, so he's come up. To so the, he's got the underhook. He's come up to the dog fight position. Yeah. So he's he's a uh, single so leg. So dog fight, yeah, for me. Are you going to have to? Yeah. So, so what so does that mean exactly? Imagine imagine that. So he's um, the, the your opponent's got the wizard or you've got the wizard? Yeah, the opponent's got the wizard. Right. You've got the underhook. So you're either right. grabbing the leg. Right. Or your hands on the back. Okay, I've got, healing, you. Right? I've got you. I've got you. And then you can either gable grip both legs Yes. Or one leg or just literally cut the leg. Yeah. And then you start you like- drive forward. Yeah. And you start, and get on their you back start sprinting like you're doing a right. 100, 100 meter sprint. Just, right. you know, just run them, run them down basically. Right. Put their back on the ground. Now their choice is, is their back going on, on the mat or are they going to go turtle and try and scramble right. away? Right. Either either way, you're, you're securing, you're securing the top position. You're securing either, um, either a passing position or, or, or working, working for the back. You know, so that's, that's what, another what example. Was that how, how did you do anyway? Bro, he done so he done so well. I was so happy and proud, man. It was like because the past few comps have been rough for him and hasn't reflected how well he's he's getting been. his blue belt on Tuesday. Yeah, he knows it already. Does yeah. he know? He knows it already. Okay, yeah. okay. So it's, for, not, it's not coming out till no, Friday no, anyway. No. But, still. <laughs> but it, you know, it's, it's um, so the past few competitions have been pretty disappoint, pretty pretty disappointing for him. You know, mm. so it was it was great to see it. Five matches and lost to six. And he lost the six. Mm. He's gone in for a takedown, just got guillotined. Right. Pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like first 10, 15 seconds. But all the other matches was just domination. Yeah. yeah. It was just, just domination. It was Good. perfect. Everything well done, came Max. together, man. It was wicked. So I guess we're going to wrap up now, bro. bro but but good, I could man. talk to you another two hours, bro, bro because honestly. I've got so many questions. Oh, we're what definitely going to come back though, right? Yeah, it sounds good, man. All sounds right, good. wicked. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just tell everyone where your club is. Might as well get some promotion out of there. Okay. Like, you're one of the guys I really want to, you know. Okay. So so yeah. it's 33 Jiu Jitsu. So on Instagram, that's at 33 Jiu Jitsu. That's just 33, like the number and yeah. then Jiu Jitsu. I'll leave the link in the description. Don't worry, okay, bro. bro. We'll put and that's in, there. that's literally outside Hornsey train station right now in North London. Um, so anyone's welcome. We just do... No Gi Jiu Jitsu. We're a growing club. We've only been going for a year. Um, so it's, it's very early days still, but we are, there we go, 33 Jiu Jitsu. Beautiful. But we've got, we've got big, kids we've got, as well. We've got, yeah, we've got yeah. big aspirations now. So uh, Score down, Zach. There you go. There's that's Max. Them, that's them there yeah, yesterday. Them, there he is. It's them. Max, it's them. you were in ear guards, bro. <laughs> yeah, he has to because his ear blew up, man. I don't care, man. What are you doing, bro? I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> Do your thing, Max. He wouldn't let him hear it yesterday. <laughs> Is it? Off. Uh, scroll up, scroll up. Go to the top picture. Top picture, the comp one, the top, top left. There, there we are, that's yesterday there. Who's the blonde guy? That's another guy, Ozzy. Train. He's only trained for a year with us and he got bronze yesterday. Cool man, he did, he did really loving well. the glasses though, did bro. You? Yeah, man, you're I was looking just, like John Kreese just, from Cobra Kai, bro. I was, just joking, <laughs> I was just joking with them, man. I was like, turn the flash down, bro. You're gonna give me a seizure, you know what I mean? Put my glasses on. His future's too, He's too, too bright. Future's too bright, bro. <laughs> too bright, man. Too bright. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. Um, that's wicked. That's wicked, man. I, I'm, I'm all for promoting, you know, guys like yourself to doing really great things. Also, I hate to praise people to their face, bro. You should always praise people in their uh, behind their back and criticize to their face, not the other way around. Yeah, that's, that's you should never nice. do it like that, right? That's nice. That's nice. Um, so um, yeah, like you're one of the good ones, bro. Thank good you. attitude. Appreciate. It. Appreciate. It. Um, you know, you know your stuff. Do you see what I'm saying? And and I think the way you teach as well, from what I hear from Max and from what I just learned today as well, you're very methodical in the way you teach, and you 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 take the student. They're the, they're the most important thing. 
Do you know what I'm saying? It's not about you and it's not about, you know, sometimes uh, especially just become very cultish. Like a stage show. Yeah, oh, bro. look at me. I am the professor. That's and, it. And you know, a lot of philosophy on the map. That's another thing that really annoys me, yeah? <laughs> professor in Portuguese means teacher. Doesn't mean university lecturer, yeah? yeah. yeah? Some of you need to pipe down a little bit, yeah? <laughs> Seriously, yeah? Like, but it's know? the philosophy lessons in class, bro. Like, you need to, like, I think, I think... I think the McDojo guy is really doing a good job of exposing, you know, but I think sometimes, you know, like coaches can get. It's the whole identity. Bro, when your identity is wrapped up in jujitsu, that's not a good thing, bro. No, it's not. You know, in anything that you do, it's if not. your identity is wrapped around your work, yeah. if it's wrapped around, you need, you need to yeah. kind of, that's a th- Jiu-jitsu, wrestling, grappling, whatever, martial art, that's a thing. Just because you're a black belt doesn't mean that you're a life coach. That's it, bro. Yeah. That's it. You know, and then a, a lot of things are, are happening in, in the community. There's people coming out, speaking out about abuse and all this stuff. And I feel like if you do go and train with someone, yeah, bro, he's your teacher, bro, but that's on the map. Yeah, don't put him on a pedestal. Yeah, bro. Because you know. he's got his own, or she, or whoever it is. They've got their own issues outside. Them. Absolutely. Respect, very important, yeah. you know. And I think respect is earned. Yeah. you got to earn your students' respect. And Absolutely. the other way, as a student, you should give your respect to someone who deserves it, not, not someone who... You know, like the the manners, people's manners are not like, you know, having good good manners with their students and... Yeah. Or just, for example, I, this is something that is a red flag for me is when you've got the athletes in your club and you're only looking at those and not the guys that are... Because mm. that athlete will do well with or without you. Bro. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You should really assist yourself based on, quote unquote, the weakest student. Absolutely. Not the strongest student, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And as a teacher, right, you should be looking at that and think, how can I serve this guy today? Not, yeah. not the guy's got everything. Yeah. You know, the shy kid or yeah. the guy who's in his fifties and just started. Yeah. That needs that bit of respect out there to people. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. In their fifties, they pick up jujitsu. Wow. Like, that's. Yeah. A hundred percent. Or you're a woman. Who, I know, right? Who started jujitsu yeah. and. And this is not to patronize any woman either, but there's yeah. some like in your forties or whatever. We had a woman come to thirty three. I mean, she she couldn't come anymore because she um she was a chef and she got right. she got a new job. Right. But the way she just walked in, room full of men wanted yeah. to train. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. said to her, I said, I've got so much respect for that because you've got big men who've come in here. Yeah, and after one session, sorry, go come back for a few times. Uh, got a new job and, and couldn't continue but so I really but I think it's training. good that now they're starting to have w- women's only spaces as well I think that's very important I think so very honestly important. bro it is it is I think that it takes away that stigma and there's some good women out there now black belts that mm-hmm. um, and I feel like you don't need to kind of roll with a man to kind of prove anything bro do you know what I'm saying I feel sometimes it's like um, what's the word it can get dicey bro Look, some men don't want to train with women I don't some men don't feel yeah, like it's, comfortable. Uh, it's don't feel comfortable yeah. uh, obviously you've got religious reasons yeah, yeah, yeah. they might they might feel like well I'm I'm, feel, I'm wasting my time and I feel yeah. like I'm not I can't really go hard with you yeah, but you're yeah. jumping on my back taking liberties yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know <laughs> choke me out and make me look bad kind of thing but I can't really but go, I think it's a lose-lose you know for a man yeah. it's a lose if you take it too easy yeah then you'll be like, you're patronizing me. And if you go too hard, it's bullying, bro. Exactly. So you kind of like to kind of, and it's very difficult, especially there's always that, it's a man and a woman that's, there's that, whether you like it or not, bro. It's the truth. Not everyone's a monk, bro. Do you understand? Like, that's why for me, obviously for religious reasons, we don't do it. But Mm -hmm. even if that wasn't in there, I would not feel comfortable because I don't want to have that kind of, layer on top and you, you put the women together and they have a proper tear up yeah bro well, what's proper wrong with that tear up and, yeah. and they're going to get more out of that than they are training with 100%. a guy who's oh come and train with the lightest yeah. guy in the room who's 65 yeah. kilos of muscle yeah 65 kilos of muscle yeah like where is it you know i mean this day and age out. to kind of say that men and women are different is what's the word it's uh controversial which is nuts. Well, this is coming from people that haven't done combat sports. Before. Yeah, this is it, bro. This is coming from men who've never had someone grab hold of them. <laughs> exactly. Oh, all the same. They're, but they always bring the outliers. Yeah. They always bring like Gabby Garcia into it, bro. Bro, she'll choke anyone out. Uh, uh, uh? Outlier. <laughs> it's an, she's an outlier, no, bro. She's going to choke a, a, a man out who's the same. Same, same, same. Exactly. That's very, very who's different. going to win there? There you go. And also on the other side of things, which is a very thin 
and 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 like someone who's on the, on the outline the male side as well. So we're not talking about outliers. We're talking about ninety nine percent of the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, exactly. But I feel like again, um, to create these safe spaces for women to kind of actually forget they create themselves, bro. And I think I've seen a lot of women only classes popping up. In London now, it's very, it's, it's good. It's, I think it's, it's a, good a good thing. thing. Bro. It's a good thing. If you don't want to do, that's on you. You can yeah, go and train. There you are go places. To mixed classes, if that's what you want. Exactly. You can go to women's only classes, if that's what you this want. If that's it. how you feel more comfortable and then brilliant. Like I know this. I, I laugh about it. As a, you know the, the Gracie Baja thing. Yeah. Jujitsu is for everyone. Mm. Yeah, oh, jujitsu is for everyone, but you can't even come twice a week. You can't even commit to it. It's not for yeah. everyone. Yeah, it's yeah, for yeah. who wants to do it. Who wants to do it? Yeah. So jujitsu is for the ones. Like anything in life, who want to put who want to put the time in, yeah, yeah. yeah so it, it's a good thing. I feel I feel also like you know they say this about money as well. They say money, money, what's the word? Magnifies who you are. Mm. So if you're a if you're a an evil person, money will make you even more evil. Does that make sense? If you're wow. a kind person. Yeah inside it'll, it'll magnify that you'll be kind you just is the same i would say martial arts if you're a bully and you train martial arts mm -hmm. like more than likely it's going to make you unless unless you get humbled bro but again you could use that like if that's inside you we've seen it bro we've seen i'm yeah. sure you've you've come across guys who've maybe come in and you kind of sense it. This guy's a bully. Yeah, and to be honest with you, not so much at 33 because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's early days, but yeah, you know, you're always going to meet these but characters during, over the years. You're going to meet nutters, bro. Yeah. <laughs> We've had it at Legion. They've come. Nuts, <laughs> they've, 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 they're kind of big guys and yeah. they want to... And then they get roasted by a 16-year-old and it's like, uh, you know what? I can't be that guy in here, innit? So they yeah. don't come back. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. But Jack, first, is there anything else do you want to add? Nah, I feel like I've, I've, I need to ask you more questions, but I just feel like I can chat to you all day. But with def, I don't want it this to be the last. I want it to be an open for you. You're welcome. You're one of the GWO alumni now, bro. Wicked. So you're going to come yeah, back whenever it. you want. Appreciate it. We want to try and organize, hopefully, within the next six to nine months. Maybe like a few, we might watch a Polaris together and we can just, you know, yeah, yeah, nice. Do a live. Do you know what I'm saying? You nice, can watch nice, it. Nice. And, and Yeah, Polaris. Uh, I would like to actually get on Polaris this year. Message you, but you never actually got back to me. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out, bro. But I've done a Hadouken, bro. I would like to get on there. So can you please sort something out, yeah? Hey, right, get my boy Jack on there, bro. You ain't going to get a better guy than Jack, man. I see. I right, clip that one and at them, bro. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> he, he just you. cut a, a WWE. You should have done that Hacksaw Jim Duggan, bro. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but yeah, get Jack on, man. Bro, please. Let's go, yes. man. I want to see it. I'll buy tickets, bro. That's what it's about, right? Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, was it exciting jujitsu and uh, and you know good? Uh, what's it called? Uh, what's the word? I want to see some of your to prove your your jujitsu in it. Of course, what's man. That, bro? Of course, you've been working on it for a while. Yeah, yeah. Have you got anyone in mind that you want to like? No, no, I haven't. Whoever, bro. I mean, who, do you know what? I'm trying, I'm trying to get you to call bro. someone call out, bro. No, that's not. That's not, uh, that's that's not, not your style. That's not my style. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. not my style. I've got my neck. I want to do the IBJJF uh, London Open in July. Then okay, Kenogi, okay. and then I've got a match um, in Southampton on Grapple Kings. Okay, at the end of end of July. Wicked. Um, so yeah, it's all about now. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for a long time. I should be a lot better than I am, but like I say, I wasted eight eight years or so just not being as logical and methodical as I am now, just you turning mean, up, you going mean through about, the motions. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Oh, today we're doing a flying arm, but okay. Oh, you know, like now I've got systems in place. Yeah. Finally, it's taken me so long, you know. So you need a chance to battle test those. those so no, uh, I just, yeah. I, 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 I want to, want to get on some shows and, and actually, cause I'm 30 now, man. Yeah. I like, realistically, you can't do this forever, man. How it long do you got? on the body, man. I reckon mid to late thirties, and I'll be done. 37, 38. I reckon I'll be done. There's, there's so much other stuff to do in life, man. Yeah, that's it, bro. You know what I mean? Can't be that's doing it. can't be doing this 60 bro. years old. I don't want to fight kids? masters ever. I don't want to compete masters ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically you are a masters. Technically, but technically, I think Masters that's, one. That's just I'll never compete masters, yeah, yeah. bro. I don't wanna <laughs> You don't yeah. have to, innit? Nah. Because I was looking into it the other day, but, but this is what I don't understand, yeah. How can you be a multiple world champion in an adult division mm. and then you go and compete masters, yeah? And then you just go back to the adult division. Cause like realistically, like those those masters divisions are for guys who started who just started later. Not like or, former world champions yeah, yeah, in the yeah. adult division. Oh, I'm just gonna go and warm up at the at the masters division, spank everyone. Oh, is that, does that happen? 
and then I'm gonna go to the adult and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna win that. Like, but I thought you can't go up. But oh yeah, but they're older. Because I, when I read in the IBGF, I think they said that you can't you go up, can't you can go, go down. Up. Yeah, you can go down, but yeah. you can't go up. Yeah. But I'm guessing these guys are like, for example, Cyborg, yeah, so like, for example. Yeah. yeah. He's 30, but, he's my age, I think. Yeah. But let's say like you're, you're 32, 33. Yeah. And you're multiple world champion, yeah. world medalist. Yeah, yeah. How can you then go and fight, go, go and masters, fight, yes. go and fight, go and fight masters, bro? Like, I don't understand. Like That's why it's like, hey, everyone look, every, everyone do what you're going to do. do your like, me, you're never going to see me can be in masters, bro. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Even when you're in your 40s? I ain't good. I'll be, when we compete in your 40s, bro. Oh, okay, right. Nah. Right, right. nah. Nah, that's just me though. That's yeah, what's wrong with that, bro? You know what I mean? That's yeah, just, yeah. That's what do you think you're going to be doing in your forties? I want to grow thirty three jiu jitsu. I want to. I do have big goals and aspirations, man. Um, I want another look. I, eventually, in the next year or two, I want a full time place. Right. And then do you do this full time, by the way? You teach full time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wicked, bro. And then in the mid to long term, I want somewhere in South Spain like Marbella. I want to open up somewhere there as well. Um. Proper geezer, bro. Yeah. I love the sun. Though. I'm here, I get miserable. I need to take like 10,000. I use vitamin D every day just to feel normal. Yeah, that's yeah? true. That's true. That's true. You know? true. Um, so yeah, that's the... So that, you know, Cronin, that yeah. name, is that Norwegian, bro? There must no, be some sort of Celtic. It's actually, not Celtic. Um, uh, it's actually, uh, it's actually Irish. Oh, is it Irish? But, but, oh, the, the root of the name, oh, oh, cro Cronin or, or Cron is it actually what it Cron means brown or swarthy. So what I think it was swarthy is the, What's that? Is, the is brown complex. It's like what I think. Yeah, I don't spend too much time looking into it. Is the 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 Israelite Moors moving up into that part of the world and settling? Yeah, and you know we kidnapped a few people from your ends, yeah, bro. Really? Plenty, I think. Yeah, Jack, you know that, yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to have like navies and whatnot, and what was it? There we go. The name Cronin is derived from the saffron word Cron. Saffron, it's saffron coloured. Okay. West Cork. Yeah, I've heard see, see, saffron coloured. I've heard brown or suave. There's a, there's a couple so of cork, different... Cork is Cornwall, right? Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, it's Ireland. Sorry, my bad. South of, um, south of, south of Ireland. Interesting. Bro, yeah. Google this, bro. Google yeah, go Moroccan. Ah. Uh, or is it Moorish? So, uh, 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 Irish links. We know in the potato famine, yeah, the king of Morocco, yeah, basically donated uh, some. There's a plaque. There's actually a plaque in in one in, in a specific town in Ireland. I can't remember what it was. Well, so there's been a lot, and and you, you can't, bro, do you know how many half Irish, half Algerian, or half Moroccan? Bro, how many how many people do we know, bro? Too many. Too I many, know, bro. There's this. I don't know what it is with the Irish and the North Africans, but. Um, yeah, you might know. It might be uh, might have some North African. You definitely got that tan, bro. I love the sun. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it, bro. Not in the desert though. Like you know, what yeah, I mean? he like, likes the coast, doesn't it? The yeah, coastal yeah, side, yeah. You know, like you know, <laughs> late twenties. You know? But you know, we got coast as well, isn't it? So there's desert and there's, we've okay. got loads of stuff. Okay. So okay. you might be from the north, bro. Okay, who knows? You never know, bro. You never know. I need to do one of those DNA tests. If uh, I'll be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised if you got some some more issues. Don't want to. Um, I just don't like the idea of those big companies, whatever having. Oh, having your idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Like yeah, I didn't well. think of it like that. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah that's true. Apparently, yeah. this, it gets harvested uh, and kept on database. Yeah, of course, it everything will, does these days. They man. aggregate all that data, innit? Yeah, it? Does. Everything yeah, does these yeah, days. What you know where I'm from? Well, so what? Yeah, what so what? <laughs> yeah, but I, be but huh? but I don't want you to though. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, on that note, Jack. <laughs> I'll probably see you around, hopefully. Yeah, if you do manage to tear yourself away from 33, I know you're building it up. So if you manage, you're more than welcome yeah, to come down bro, 100%, to Legion, bro. I and, uh, definitely will at some point. And, bro, you know what? Yeah, actually, this yeah. is what we want. Yeah. You need to come do a seminar, bro. Oh, I'd love to. I'm going to speak to Actually, MS did speak to me about it a few. This is just before the pandemic. Your name came up. I'll do it on guard and pulling guard. Oh! <laughs> 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 do you know what? If it's from you, then it's yeah. fine. Well, Who I'm better else? Teach wrestling, am I? Do you know what I mean? But you know what would be lovely? Doing those uh, catch wrestling rounds. Like, do you know the same oh, style yeah, as you're cool. doing? That'd be really cool. That'd be good to show that'd us be, that concept, bro. Really cool. cool. I yeah, think that'd yeah. be quite awesome, bro. I'll yeah. speak to Amir about it. Definitely. He said that's your cool. name. He does speak very highly of you, Jack, by the way. Oh, I really like you, man. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. We did. Because we were doing. Remember the Legion Jet seminar series? That got cut short by the bloody pandemic. So every month we're trying to get someone that yeah, your name was. The Gable over under stuff with the wrestling. Like, up. I think you guys will 
You'll love it. I'd love it, bro. It doesn't take long to get good at, man. Yeah, it doesn't 100%. take long, man. And uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out maybe. What, what days are you free, bro? Is it a Sunday? Will Sunday be work? How, um, right now, 33 is Tuesdays and Fridays, but the Friday might be moving to Thursday. So right. Friday could even... Uh, so Friday's Friday is good Friday yeah. might, uh, might might open up very soon within the next couple of months. Oh, sick, bro. Yeah, so we'll yeah, keep yeah. in contact, innit? Brilliant, definitely. Man. Brilliant. You heard it first. You want to come and see Jack do a seminar at Legion? Definitely keep an eye out. And if you want to go and check out Jack's... Jack Cronin's Club 33 Jiu-Jitsu, it's going to be in the description. And I think that's it for me and Jack. Bro, appreciate it. Thank I'll you. See you in the next Thank one. You. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, bro. bro. Appreciate it. Take care. See you guys in the next one.